to the Central Philippine University National Service Training Program, Plenary on Environmental Awareness and Water Conservation here at Rose Memorial Auditorium. To start our program proper, may I request everybody to please stand up for the opening prayer to be led by Mr. Elvin Jude Gabalinan and to be followed by the singing of our national anthem to be conducted by Mrs. Marilyn Gahom, respectively. Let us pray. Most precious and heavenly Father, salamat kino sa ang uh, bago nga kabuhi nga ginatag sa mon. Salamat mang kino sa imo katutom sa mon in spite kino sa mga uh, obstacles and trials nga mo naagom. Salamat mang kino sa ang uh, bago nga kabuhi nga ginatag sa mon nga sa diin kino sa stingaga may experience na mon kung na, ano ikaw kino kagamanan sa mon tagstag sa mga kabuhi. I bless kami kino sa mga plenary. I bless ang amon mga speaker. Uh, i-open gino ang tagsatag sa mga tagipasun kapag ununa sa mga student gino to understand sa uh, ila gino nga mapamatian subong kag ma-apply nila gino sa ila mga tagsatag sa mga kabuhi pag ito nga kagid sa amon gino kag i-bless kami in Jesus name we pray Amen be seated and at this point may we give a clap of uh, as we welcome Professor Anali D. Hilongos for the opening remarks. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I would like to extend a sincere welcome to all of you joining us today for this plenary on environmental awareness and water conservation. In addition, I greatly appreciate the participation of our resource persons, members of the Sustainable Campus Committee chaired by my dear classmate, Mr. Prim Vergara III. Promoting environmental awareness is a crucial part of being an environmental steward. We must understand the fragility of our environment and the importance of its protection. Only when we learn how to take care of Mother Earth can we teach those around us. This plenary acts as a catalyst for you to begin your role as an environmental steward by teaching your friends, our friends and family that the physical environment is fragile and indispensable, we can begin fixing the problems that threaten it. Today's plenary makes a powerful point that the environment is in critical condition. And while there is still hope to change our course, time is of essence. Start participating in the change and teach our community what it means to be sustainable. Again, good morning and welcome to today's plenary. 
indeed it is a warm welcome. So today we would like to call on Mrs. Ronalisa Senal for the introduction of the resource speakers for this session. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. My task today is to introduce to you our seven speakers to, for today's plenary on environmental awareness and water conservation. Our first speaker today is Mr. Raigo Garcia, who will talk about solid waste and management, the Centralian way. Mr. Garcia is currently our CPUR president and a third year Juris Doctor student of Central Philippine University College of Law. He has been a GIS Data Officer Consultant on GU Mapping and Governance Unit, Philippine Rural Development Project of Department of Agriculture, Regional Project Coordinating Office 6. He is also a Project Development Associate Consultant, GU Mapping and Government Unit, Philippine Rural Development Project, Department of Agriculture, Regional Project Coordinating Office 6. Aside from that, he has been an engineer one at the Bureau of Soils and Manage Water Management, Department of Agriculture, Diliman, Quezon City, and a part-time faculty at Gimara State College. Again, our first speaker, Mr. Raigo Garcia. Our second speaker is a former CPUR senator and CPUR vice president a former assistant director of CPU Office for External Affairs, and former associate chaplain and associate pastor of our university church. Currently, he is a director of CPU Office of Communications and coach of CPU Table Tennis College varsity team. Everyone, let's welcome our second speaker, Reverend Francis Neil G. Halandoon. Our third speaker will discuss with us the topic about biodiversity, its importance, its importance to daily living. She graduated her Bachelor of Science in Biology way back 1988 here at Central Philippine University. And in 1989, she finished her Master's of Science in Teaching Biology at, Diliman, at De La Salle University, Manila. She earned her PhD in Science Education at West Visaya State University, year 2015. Formerly, she is the Department Head of Life Science Department, and currently, she is the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. She is also the president of Biology Teachers Association, Western Visayas Chapter, a professional organization of biology teachers in Western Visayas. She is also the corresponding secretary of the Philippine Society of Microbiology, Western Visayas. A member of the Sustainable Campus Committee of Central Philippine University, and Biodiversity on Wales CPU Chapter. She is happily married to Chief Officer Richard Fernandez and blessed with three children, Kevin Ace, Richard Dominic, and Ricky Chast. Everyone, our third speaker, Dr. Stella Fernandez. Our fourth speaker is an experienced lecturer with a demonstrative demonstrated history of working in the paint manufacturing industry and humanitarian works. Skilled in project and process management, logistics, and water quality analysis. Strong education, professional with a master's of engineering, focus in water engineering and management, and climate change from Asian Institute of Technology. Currently, she is the faculty of Central Philippine University College of Engineering 
and water sanitation and health officer at certain world at concern worldwide and a process engineer of Rescott Incorporated. Our fourth speaker, Chrisam Joy ha engineer Chrisam Joy Haspe. Sorry. <laughs> Our fifth speaker will talk about groundwater conservation and rainwater utilization, which will be discussed by engineer Dempna Castigador, a CPU alumna who graduated cum laude with a, with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, year 1984. She is also an editor-in-chief of Centralite, 1984, and has obtained his, her Master in Engineering degree from Xi'an Institute of Technology in Thailand. She worked in industry for more than 16 years in the areas of project engineering, energy conservation, pollution control, customer service, quality management and logistics, and distribution. She was a member of the, the Pollution Control Association of the Philippines for several years. Her last assignment was as National Logistics and Distribution Manager. She was also involved in the committee for several computerization projects, including BP, CS, and SAP. Engineer Castigador has been with CPU for 15 years. Her involvement has included quality management, management, special projects, planning, student recruitment, and institutional advancement. Currently, she is a faculty of the Chemical Engineering Department detailed to the Office of Institutional Advancement as Director, where she serves as liaison to the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia for projects and with the World Bank Philippines. Once again, our fifth speaker, Engineer Dempna Castigador. Our second to the last speaker will talk about ecological waste management program of the university. Everyone, let's welcome Dr. Aris Ruda Romaliosa. Dr. Romaliosa finished her degree of Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Engineering year 2001 from Central Philippine University and ranked fifth in the PRC board examination for agricultural engineers in the same year. She obtained her master's in environmental engineering at the University of St. Lasalle, Bacolod, and was awarded the first in, pro in project paper. She then finished her PhD in, in the environmental engineering cum laude from Bauhaus Universitat Weimar in Weimar, Germany, focusing on the role of the informal waste sector in biomass bracket production. Presently, she is Professor Three and the chairperson of the Department of Agricultural Engineering and Environmental Management under the College of Agriculture, Resources and Environmental Sciences of Central Philippine University. An active researcher, inventor, and practicing professional agricultural engineer and accredited member of the DENR Environmental Impact Assessment Review Committee, which is responsible in reviewing and assessing the environmental feasibility of projects prior to being issued with environmental compliance certificate. Again, our second to the last speaker, Dr. Ares Roda Romaliosa. Last but not the least, our seventh speaker is a nurse by profession who graduated his Bachelor of Science in Nursing, year 1995. He finishes his certificate of chaplaincy at Central Philippine University College of Theology, year 1999. In the year 2010, he obtained his diploma in advanced diploma in engineering design, civil, structural, 
at Canvera Institute of Technology, Bros. Act. He has been the supervisor of building upkeep and maintenance department, as well as the work student uh, study program of the university. Not only that, he has been also the officer in charge of the university security, safety, and discipline office, an assistant to the director of student affairs way back 2001 to 2003. It's, he has also served as student assistant chaplain at the university and re reliever chaplain at Iloilo Mission Hospital. Presently, he is the concurrent population, uh, pollution, sorry, concurrent pollution control officer of Central Philippine University, the chairperson of Sustainable Campus Committee of the university, as well as the technical assistant of the president in concurrent occupational safety and health officer of the university. Everyone, our, our seventh speaker, Mr. Prem Vergara III. So, as we give the floor to our speakers, me, everyone will give attention for you to be able to learn new ideas on the various topics we have today. Thank you, everyone. Like music and art, love of nature is a common language that can transcend political or social boundaries. For our first speaker on solid waste and management, the Centralian Way, let us all give a round of applause to Mr. Diego Garcia, our CPUR president. Check, one, two, check. Okay, hello, good morning. Sige, may damo pa, laka-laka ang ano no, laka-laka ang pulongkoan. Sige, I ask actually Ma'am Hilongos, before I start my uh, presentation, sige, may energizer ta, Anay, since uh, time check is 11 minutes past the hour of 8 in the morning. Okay, everyone, please stand. Please stand, okay. Tindog tanan, tindog, tindog. Okay. Okay, sige. Ang atong nga energizer, ginatawag na bumabagyo. Sige. To energize our brain cells, and of course, para mamasima, simanta sa likod. Okay. Normal lang. Sige, normal line. Ayan. Balaan nyo naman eh. Okay. Paghambal ko gani nga umaambon. So, muna siya. Umaambon. This is umaambon. Okay. This is umuulan. This is umuulan. And stronger is bumabagyo. Okay. May tawo in front of you, sa kilid mo, and sa likod mo. Okay. Let's start. Ayan. Paghambal ko nga bumabagyo sa likod ng kaharap mo, amun amun mo na imo, uh, ano, ko uh, student in front of you. Okay? Sa tubang mo. Sa tubang mo. Okay? Sa tubang, sa tubang mo. Okay, balos-balos, wala na karon, balos-balos, wala na karon. Okay? Sige. Sa second ano, sa second uh, ano na dang area, balcony. Sige, ano lang kamo, kayit lang kamo that line. Okay, let's start. Umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Okay, umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Tandugan yung likod sa ano, sa ang tawo, sa tubang mo. Hindi ka mo maguya-uya. Okay? Tanduga. Ayan, tanduga. Sa, sa, ang sa una, hangin. <laughs> okay? Sige. Next. Bumabagyo sa likod ng kaharap mo. Okay? Masimasiha na yung tubang mo. Okay, masimasiha. Okay? Masimasiha. Masimasiha. Okay? Masimasiha. And then, umaambon sa liig ng kaharap mo. Umaambon sa liig ng kaharap mo. Hindi maguya-uya. Hindi maguya-uya. Hindi maguya-uya. Okay. Yes. Those facing at the front. Sige. 
Nen, namo kami na. Okay, liwat. Umaambon sa liig ng kaharap mo. Game. Sige, face at your left na lang. Ang ari dere, face at your left. Sige, face at your left. Sige. Face at your left. Sige. Sige ah. Face at your left. Guys, please participate ang ara sa babaw. At your left. Okay, at your left. Okay. Sige. Now, umaambon sa ulo ng kaharap mo. Umaambon sa ulo ng kaharap mo. Nami, sa feeling, no? Aga, pagi na masimasik. <laughs> umaambon sa ulo ng kaharap mo. Okay. Bumabagyo sa likod ng kaharap mo. Ah, bumabagyo. Masimasi halikod sa tupad mo. Ah. Masimasi halikod sa tupad mo. Umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Okay, umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Okay. Kay balos-balos ni, o kay reverse. 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 Now, umaambon sa liig ng kaharap mo. Bumabagyo sa likod ng kaharap mo. Okay, bumabagyo. And umaambon sa bewang ng kaharap mo. Okay, so that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, abi ko gani hindi siya ma pull off kaya ba ko damo damo ang students. But anyway, thank you so much for your participation. Okay, so my topic this morning uh, is all about waste management, the Centralian way. Okay. I actually contemplated kung ano ang ako ni sulod sa akong PowerPoint presentation because hindi ko balan kung ano gid ang current status sa solid waste management within the university or even what are the practices or the traditional ways within the university. But from my end, as your CPUR president, and at the same time as a student in this university, I will present later on the pipeline projects and initiative of the Republic for you to participate at the same time and to get involved with our projects. This is not just within the administration level, but at the same time, students' participation. Because actually, what is the challenge as of this moment is please get involved. We're just a mere students taking different courses, enrolled in a different colleges, but now the question is, how can you help? What is my contribution to the society, into the environment at the same time. Now, since we have pipeline projects for the CPUR, and because you are one or you are part of the jurisdictional area of the Republic, and you're, you are part of the student tree of the Republic, now it's for you and to assess to participate. This is one of the pictures that you're commonly uh, makita, okay? Foreseen or visualized. Makadto ka mo bi sa kalaunan. Makadto ka mo bi even along the street side. Ano ang pwede nyo contemplate for this matter? Yes, every day ta siya makita. 
Yes, every moment, maski gasakay ta sa zip, makita ta siya. Magpuli ta sa balay, along the street, may ara kita mga secret dump sites. Now again, try to contemplate. Another photo, here. This is actually a photo depicting what is actually happening on their level. Students or families deprived. Amo ni ila pangitan an. Amo ni ila livelihood. We're actually blessed because we're here. And now, this is not just a topic focusing on their lives or focusing on the environment, but as part of this republic, as part of this university, or even just an individual persona, what can you, what can you do? Or what can you contribute? Another photo, this one. Dagot, maski sa diin lang, and I think, balaan nyo na, magkakatabo na di sa university. Ara tagapong ko sa Half Moon area, ara lang dang dagot. Ara tagapong ko sa mga benches and canopies, dira sa may hallway, ara ang dagot. And now, ang dagot nga na, nagalabot na sa aton nga mga waterways. Hindi lang siya sa kadutaan, kundi ara na siya sa waterways. And ano ang mga epekto sina sa aton nga mga waterways? Anong epekto sina sa aton nga mga uh, sa aton nga dagat? The marine lives underwater. Anong epekto sina? And I think nakita niyo na ang mga memes and all the the infographics ara sa aton nga social media platforms makita niyo and even the sustainable developmental goals of the UN. Just a trivia, in 2016, the country's estimated waste generation per capita is amounted to 0 0.040 kilogram per hour, or per day, sorry, both for, for urban and rural areas. It means rural areas Atong dito sa Uma, atong dito sa aton nga munisipyo, atong dito sa aton nga mga mga probinsya. Urban areas, there is a city. Okay? Urbanized areas. Now, 0 0.40 kilogram per day ang aton gina-contribute nga waste generation. That's 0.40. And according to the World Bank study, that by 2025, the country's estimated waste generation per capita will increase up to 0 0.05 kilogram per day or 0 0.09 kilogram per day. And now, again, please contemplate. From 0 0.40 kilogram, and ano na ta subong? 2019. Pila na na ay Han Subong. By 2025, based on a World Bank study, that will increase on 0 0.5 kilogram. Because it's an individual discipline. Ano ang mga plastic or ano ang mga waste or garbage nga aton ginagamit every day? Question yourselves. Question yourselves. Ano ang ginabakal ko kung aga? Ano ang ginagamit ko kung mag-inom ko soft drinks? Mag-take out ko ano akong ginabakal? Ano akong ginagamit? Even mag ko sa fast food chain, McDo, Jollibee, or any fast food areas, ano akong ginabakal? And to combat that, ano ang pwede ko himuon as a person? Pabayan ko lang ba? Or I can just say nga, okay, miss, hindi ko magamit straw. 
Thank you. Pero hindi ko magamit straw. It's so simple. ba? Diba? It's an act of discipline. Paano mo disiplinaho ng imo ka o galingon even just to say no? Even just to prevent the commencement of such particular food chain area or kiosk or food kiosk nga maghatag sa imo sang straw or a single use plastic. That's so simple. Again, it would reckon to your personal or individual discipline. Philippines is among the countries with the most number of plastic waste being dumped into the seas despite the enactment of Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act since 2001. We're actually based on the ranking third ang Philippines nga nagakontribute sa plastic waste sa dagat and sa waterways. Wala pa na ilabot ang sa mga landfill. Wala pa na ilabot ang sa mga street sites or sa aton yung mga dump sites. Okay? I just want to, to give you a concept or to define what waste management is all about. Based on RA9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2001. Waste management refer to the discipline associated with the control of generation, storage, collection, transfer, and transport, processing, and disposal of solid waste in a manner that is in accord with the best principles of public health, economics, engineering, conservation, aesthetics, and other environmental considerations, and that is also responsive to public attitudes. Again, the gist of this definition is all about or reckoned again to your individual discipline. Yes, we have this enactment. Yes, the government enacted this law for us to implement. For the institutions, NGOs, and local government unit to implement. And now, as part of the Republic of the Philippines, or even just a student tree of this university, what can you say or what can you assess? What is now the current status of waste management, even just for yourself? A very simple outward action. Nga pwede natin mahimo. That's waste management. This is actually a systematic way kung paano natin. Kay because rampant na ang umuna ng sitwasyon, no? even just sa aton nga panimalay, now the government intervenes to enact this law, to pass this law. And it's for us, and it's for us to implement. Per RA9003, uh, RA9003 at the same time, section 56, it says, the national government through the DEX or the Department of Education, Cultures, uh, Culture and Sports, and in coordination with the concerned government agencies, NGOs and private institutions shall strengthen the integration of environmental concerns in school curricula at all levels, with particular emphasis on the theory and practices of waste management principles like waste management minimization, paano natin i-minimize ang aton ng mga uh, plastic waste or ang aton ng mga uh, waste products, specifically resource conservation and recovery, segregation at source, reduction, recycling, reuse, and composing, in order to promote environmental awareness and action among citizens, citi citizenry. Okay. Why is it that the goal of government, or even just institutions, nga ang goal nila is source reduction? I just want to, to define source reduction. Ang anong source reduction nga ginatawag? 
Source reduction is a reduction of solid waste before it enters the solid waste stream by methods such as product design, material substitution, materials reuse, and packaging restriction. Okay. Source reduction. Nga, ah, kailangan ta pa mag-reuse or mag-recycle kung from the start pa lang or within our level pa lang, ma-reduce na natin ang production sang waste. Like what I've said a while ago, kung ikaw hindi magamit sang single-use plastic, that's part of source reduction. Because it's part na kung sa diin, gina-minimize ni mo ang pagwa sang plastic. Or gina-minimize ni mo ang pag-produce or discharge sining mga single-use plastic. That's part of source reduction. At the same time, pwede ba la ako nga magbakal lang ako sa ako nga water tumbler? Or pwede ba lang nga magbakal lang ako sa ako nga water this water sorry dispenser gidi na talon sa imuskulahan? Okay lang ba lang nga magbakal ako sa ako nga nga water bottle? Why? Ano ang concept behind that? That's so simple, ha? Again, that's an act. That's outward act na kung sa diin, makakontribute kita sa isang sa ginatawag na source reduction. Why? We have, may ara kita nga mga areas within the university nga kung sa diin may ara nga mga dispenser, right? Or even sa OI, pwede kita dito makarefill. Na? So kung may ara ka water tumbler, you can just pay 2 pesos or 5 pesos para sa diin, para makarefill. And that outward expression of yours, nga kung si diin makareduce ikaw sa pag-discharge or sa pag-produce sa ginatawag natin nga pet bottles. Isa lang na ka-action ha, mabakal lang ko tumbler. Mabakal lang ko akong tumbler. And now, you're actually contributing to lessen the production of pet bottles. And I think, aware ka mo na ang UN may ara sa 17 SDGs or Sustainable Developmental Goals. And I just want to give emphasis sa tatlo because relatable siya sa aton nga topic sa buong. And what are these? First, SDG 6, and that is clean water and sanitation. Anong effect sina? Kada mo sa ginahaboy nga basura sa dump site, and it hindi siya segregated at source. Now we have that what we call leachate. Ano na siyang leachate? It's a liquid particle or a liquid matter. Ngayon kung sa diin gagwa siya or ginaproduce sa unsegregated garbage. And that leachate, since it's in liquid form, mangita, gina siya way nga kung sa diin makadto sa aton mga waterways. Or even sa mga aton mga deep well or sa aton yung mga water sources. And anong, ano sina? Anong effect sina? Water contamination. See? We're not secure actually ano ang aton nga ginainom nga tubig. So the reason why, no, as part of this university, just outward action, dapat kabalo kita mag-segregate sa aton nga waste. Dapat kabalo kita, kagbalana natin. We must be aware of that. Ano dapat ang simple, recyclable? Ano dapat ang reusable? Ano dapat ang non-biodegradable or biodegradable? Actually, paulit-ulit naman kita nga daan nga nagahambal sina. You know? But it's actually, again, will reckon to an individual discipline. Ano ang pwede ta mahimo? Being a student, a member of your community, a member of your household, or a member of this university. Number 13 is climate action. It's actually the widespread phenomena nga nagkakatabo subong 
No, we're gradually expecting and affected by this kind of situation. And that is because of our, shall we say, excusable neglect? <laughs> but I think so. Because negligence somehow, balantaman, pero ginapabay anta japon. Okay? So I think it's not an excusable negligence, no? Kung nga ang result ang situation natin subong. And number 15, SDG, sang UN is life on land. They're actually interconnected with each other. Life on land, kita mismo apiktado, kita gani, kung balanta nga higko ang basurahan, hindi ito maghaboy basura. Integrity check. Diba? Kung balanta nga baho kagdamo lang awang basura, hindi ito maghaboy basura. Bilin ta lang da sa benches sa half moon. Ibilin ta lang da sa canopies and walkways sa Aton University in Surtside. And that's reality. You can't deny that fact. Kay because kita, balanta nga eyesore ang aton basurahan, balanta nga higo ang aton basurahan now, takaan ko ah. Remember ha, five meters away lang na sa iyong mga place, pero hindi ka pa kabalo maghaboy basura. It's easy, it's easy to say, pero kabudlay siya ubraho, no? And again, contemplate. School initiatives. What are the pipeline projects of the CPUR or the CPU Republic for this matter? Now, as of now, every event of the Republic, together with the local government units, we're actually requiring students or participants to bring their individual water tumbler in every school affair or activities. Again, hambal ko kagina, simple lang siya nga action, pero still, nag-contribute ka mo to lessen the discharge of pet bottles. And at the same time, the Pet Malu project. I will discuss this further later on. Now, we have this current proposal to the administration regarding an act of prohibiting littering, dumping, throwing of garbage, trash, rubbish, refuse, and other waste materials, and prescribing penalties for certain acts and omissions inimical to cleanliness and sanitation within school premises. Probably with the authority of the administration in the committee in charge, we're going to have, I believe so, we're going to have a consultation by next week regarding this proposal. And now, please, this is not just our fight, this is not just our initiative, but an initiative of the Republic, an initiative of the studentry of Central Philippine University. Now, please, we're actually encouraging you to please participate and get involved. Kanugon. Kanami nami nga layi, kanami nami nga bill, kanami nami nga ordinansa. Pero still, ang tawo and stakeholders involved, wala naga participate. No, to possible, ma shutdown lang sa. But again, it's a challenge for you. It's a challenge for you. Clean as you go or clay go policy. There is actually an existing policy in the university practicing this one. Di na siya? Di na siya? Balan niyo kundiin? <laughs> okay, di na siya sa my dining hall. And I'm not. Okay, ginapractice na da subong ang clay go. And I think, ginahimo niya siya, gakaon ka mo da, di ba? How come the dining hall area? Okay. Now, with the proposal under uh, the said uh, bill a while ago, clean as you go policy is widely practiced from primary schools to universities as part of an environmental advocacy to prevent waste buildup, promote food safety, health and hygiene, and proper waste management system.
In schools, it requires individual students to clean their trash, take back used utensils after meal, and segregate waste, which to be placed in the designated area provided therein. This is one of the programs and initiatives under the said act, or under the said law proposed by the CPU Republic. Now, we will not just practice such Clego policy sa my dining hall area, but again in all university controlled canteen. What is the recommendation of this? CPUR will recommend to the administration the strict implementation of these policy throughout the different university-controlled canteens, including concessionaires at OI building. Damo ga kaon sa OI. But then again, ginahatag tapa sa manoglimpyo ang aton nga kalanan, ang aton kinanan. And, and other areas or edifices within the university premises wherever it is applicable. This is actually, again, a simple outward action. Makadtuta sa OI building. Okay, mabakalta, 65 pesos, 80 pesos, ranging to 100 pesos. Now, just a simple act. Kaya tag, oh, ibilin talang aton yung utensils. Ibilin talang aton nga spoon and fork. At the same time, aton nga platito kag pinggan. Again, it's a simple outward action. Now, we want this to be comprehensive. Not just sa dining hall area, but also practicing sa UI or and other university-controlled canteen. And I think you're amenable with that. Establishment of a newly designed trash bin. This is also part of our proposal. The newly trash bins to be installed shall be placed in a set comprises of four bins for each set, and each must be painted with colors and labeled accordingly. For cannon bottles, that's red. For plastics, that's green. For paper, that's blue. And for trash, that's black. Actually, may ala kita ng current ng mga trash bins within the university, but then again, this is not segregated at source. Okay? Kita nyo mga blue bins nato, and we also have initiative like the paint a trash bin project, no? To avoid that eyesore identity of the trash bin. But then, we contemplated on this initiative. Why not? We will segregate our waste at source. Pwede ta ayhan, segregate. We can just utilize the blue bins, no? Colored and labeled. Kay nga ah, kung dako ang label, kamo mismo nga sujenti, kita mismo nga sujenti, pagpalapit ay okay trash. Trash na siya okay sa black. Um, okay, cans and bottles. Okay, that's red nga bean nga dako. Okay? Dako siya nga label para ka mo mismo makita niyo sang inyong naked eye. That's also a proposal. And it shall conform with the prescribed waste segregation guidelines under RA9003. So the committee will recommend to the administration for the provision of appropriate trash bins, receptacles within the school streets and pathways ranging from 15 to 30 meters or at such distance as the administration may deem appropriate. This is to combat the improper waste segregation and disposal of garbage inside the campus. Sorry, I'm just being idealistic for this. And I'm hoping, no, depending sa aton yung ma discussionan or mahambalan. And then the Pet Malu project. We lobbied this actually uh, last year. The general objective of this project is to help the university in its awareness campaign for a clean and sustainable campus by performing a preliminary test on the regulated use of polyethylene or terephthalate or PET bottles, as what I've said a while ago, and polystyrene cups or styrocups inside the campus. This is in partnership with the Coca-Cola company, Soda and other beverage using a fountain machine. 
shall be purchased using an individual tumbler and thus such person such person shall have a corresponding discount price the gist of this project is ikaw nga sa jante makadto ka sa oy building or ikaw nga sa jante makadto ka sa dining hall area dal a imo tumbler and you will purchase a soda or any coca cola product and you have a particular discount price because gina limit mo at the same time ang discharge ng pet bottles or styrofoams that's one thing. And I hope it will materialize and be concretized. The committee will strongly recommend this project to the administration to lower down the production or accumulation of pet bottles and styrofoams generated inside the campus. Now, installation of free potable water machine. Actually, the administration is on the process of implementing the said program. No? The administration will install um, series or nagakalain lain nga ano sa areas sang aton yung mga free potable water machines. Kaya nga, kung may arak ka mga water bottles or kung may arak ka mga water tumbler, now, arak sa mga water, free potable water machine, you can refill. Okay, and that's for free. Yan. Provisions of toiletries and regular cleaning of comfort rooms. So, ginalabi na ni Subong sa administration. No? And actually, uh, they're planning to provide no? And of course, dapat i-rehab ang, ang mga amuna, ang mga, mga destroyed or deteriorated parts within the comfort rooms. For sanitary purposes, it is also deemed necessary to provide soaps or hand-washing soaps and tissue papers in all comfort rooms maintained by the university. Okay, that's for our comfort rooms. And now, single-use plastic elimination. The committee shall propose to the administration to prohibit the use of single-use plastic inside the campus. A lot of universities within the country, state colleges, uh, nag prohibit kagin ban na nila ang paggamit ng single-use plastic. Again, maski wala ta siya ginaban, maski wala ta siya ginaprohibit, wala pa. Okay, now it's for you to assess again. No, kabalo ka dapat kung ano nga mga materials or kung ano nga mga waste no ang gina contribute mo as a person. Sa isa ka adlaw, ma reach ko ayhan ang 0.40 kilogram ng waste. Ma reach ko ayhan. Okay, question yourselves. Ano ginapa mahal ko? Uh, ko to sa uy, bakal ko sa gua. Ano nagamit ko? Ano nga plastic ako na bakal? Yan. That's all simple. Now the feed me project. This is actually ongoing and I think nakita niyo na siya. The main objective of this project is to promote proper waste disposal and increase the awareness of the students of the university for a clean and eco-friendly campus by introducing a systematic management of garbage towards a healthy environment. Now, why is it nga na concretize niya ang project? Kadamo damo, it's already rampant. Maski di ina lang, maski ara sa benches ang uy, maski ara sa mga benches ang half moon, damo damo sa pet battles. Now, CPUR, no, together with the administration and the Committee for Environment, they take initiative. Sini. It's actually cliche or makita tanisha in some other universities or schools. But then again, we want to strengthen this. This is a Fed Me project. Makita nyo sa kilid sang promenade. That's a Fed Me. So, imo na lang na tani, ikaw na lang huna-huna, kung gusto mo siya butangan sa styro. Ayan. Kaya actually, that's for plastic bottles. Kaya pag-check to namun ligad, although damadamo na plastic bottles, pero may ara gid siya individual persona, nga kung sa diin nagbutang sa ang ilang styro cups and plastics. Imo na na siya, conscience. And, kung paano mo na siya i-combat. But then again, this is actually an initiative. May ara kami, ang beneficiary sini, ang aton ng work student study program, at the same time, ang aton ng mga agricultural and biosystems engineering students. Because, pwede ni siya ibaligya, or pwede ni siya himuon, or i-recycle. Okay, that's Feed Me. So participate. Try ka mo to shoot-shoot sa aton ng Feed Me project. 
na kadto ka mo to sa kilid sang aton nga promenade. Kung may makita ka mo nga pet battles, puluta, ay may feed me project si CPUR, makadto ko to bala sa kilid sang promenade, dito ko ihaboy. At least kahit papano, in just a minute, nakabulig pa ako. Okay? That's so simple. Now, what are the benefits? Why is it we need to practice waste management or proper waste management? I have four now. Keeps the environment clean and fresh. Diba? Siyempre, kung wala basura ka na, may man eh. No? Di man ta, pwede ta ka pungko-pungko. Kastorya-storya with someone else. Dira sa half moon area. Because it's a dating place. Saves the earth and, cons uh, and conserves energy. Good. That's so basic. Helps you earn money. Again, pwede ta siya mabaligya. Pwede kita ka-contribute sa employment. Last is reduces environmental pollution. Because kung ginahimo ta siya, simple nga mga bagay, discipline ourselves, now we're contributing to reduce the environmental pollution. I just want to leave a quote from Gaylord Nelson. Humble niya, the ultimate test of man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for the future generations whose words of thanks will not be heard. What are the actions we're actually doing right now will have or having that tantamount effect no, to the future generations? And I think, nabati anta na ni siya pila na kabagay or pila na ka times. The reason why, if we want to preserve the future generation or even just a single part sa imong mga ego, nga you have that conscience to contribute sa inyong mga kabataan later on, sa aton yung mga kabataan later on, and sa future generations. So now, Please act on this. Contribute on this. Get involved on this. Another quote is, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This is actually a question. Pila ka mga tao, sino atong mga tao nga nag-championing for this cause? In, hindi ta siya pag-stereotype. Hindi ta siya pag-i, let's say, they're actually championing for that. And do you think that would make you a less of a person? Because you're actually fighting to reduce environmental pollution? And fighting for that cause? Sin ang mga tao nga to? Question yourselves. Do you think you're part of it? Do you think I am ready to get involved? Do you think I will be part of that cause? Now, again, it's a challenge. Please contemplate. Assess every actions you're, made, you're making. Even just a simple outward actions of yours, I believe it would have a positive and progressive effect, not just within the university, but it would create a ripple effect in the nearby communities. That would be all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sir Diego. Indeed, it is well said. And uh, we are all part of the total sum as what you and I do will impact the now, the tomorrow, and the future. So let's proceed to our next speaker with the topic man and woman as only God's steward of his creation. Let's give a round of applause to Reverend Francis Neil Halandoon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Bakod ng ito speaker, tabago lang do ka hinay sa ng inyo tingo gaw. Good morning. Muna yah. 
Let us bow down our heads. Let us pray. Lord, as we start this uh, reflection, we pray that you will be with us. We open our hearts and our minds. Please speak to us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So my topic for this morning is a call for a biblical understanding of environmental stewardship because we are called by God to be stewards of his creation. Now can we read together Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Begin. And God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Now, if you are God and you are looking down on planet Earth, can you still say that it was very good? Honestly, if you are God, yes or no? Do no ya kita no magsabat sang no no, de bala? Because all of us, in one way or another, has to be blamed because of what is happening around us. Now, oh. Balik bi balik sa puno. Okay, thank you. Now, one of the things that I would like to share to you this morning for a few minutes, I will end here at probably 9.15 or 9.10 if I can make it just 10 to 15 minutes because I will be going to the pre-employment seminar, which I will be speaking also. So you are first-year students. In a while, I'll be speaking to graduating students. So let me go straight to the point that this morning, I would like to challenge each one of you that we should rethink our traditional theological perspective with regards or in the light of what is happening around us. When we say theology, we say what we think, what God thinks of what is happening. We reflect on the Bible, we reflect on what is happening around us, especially our situation. Now, traditionally, we consider ourselves as the crowning glory of creation, right? Can you remember the Genesis chapter 1 story? Can you remember that? Now, when was the day that God made us, man and woman? On what day? Sixth day. What do you think would happen to us if we were created on the second day? Can we survive? What about on the third day? Can we survive? What about on the fourth day? Can we survive? No. Why in the world did God create us on the sixth day, on the latter part of the sixth day? Because there are already systems around us that God created in order for us to survive. So that means that we have to think the verses that says, subdue the earth. You have dominion over all creation. Go and multiply. These things that we need to challenge. Now, there is a need for each one of us to create or to formulate a new awareness with regards to our theology. And what is this? We need to realize that everyone should read again Genesis chapter 1. Let me make this a challenge to each one of you. Later on, when you go back home, can you read again Genesis chapter 1? Yes or no? Thank you very much. Now, what does Genesis chapter 1 tell us? That everyone is what? Inter 
connected. Now, here is a trivia. If we get ourselves out of this world, if every human being right now in this world will die, just like what uh, Thanos did, okay? Pero kay gamay-gamay lang tong iyagin, gin uh, patay. So think about this. If every one of us will die now, will planet Earth continue to survive? Yes or no? Yes or no? Actually, yes. Because the creation of God, aside from us, can actually exist because animals can give them carbon dioxide. It is us who cannot survive without everything around us. So think about it. Let's think about it. We cannot survive without this creation of God around us. There is life in all the creation of God. Now previously, we call it a superstitious belief. For example, if you talk to plants, if you talk to trees, because our ancestors did that. And we said, those are supernatural things. But what about the scientific findings that we have right now? That this, it is very good to talk to plants, not because of the talking part, but because if you are in with the vicinity of the plants and the trees, you will get what? Ample oxygen. And the plants and the trees will have ample carbon also in order for them to survive. So it is not supernatural belief. There is life in all the creation of God. Now let us challenge this because our relationship, we have seen this also in, uh, in, in our CEW. What is the relationship that is foremost being fed to us? What is the most important relationship? We say ourselves and what? And God. Our relationship with God. Now, what is the cross? The cross is not complete if it is only what? Horizontal or vertical? It should be both. It should be horizontal and it should be vertical as well. So our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, and our relationship with all the creation of God. Let us ponder on these questions as well. Discuss this in your class. Discuss this among yourselves. What do you think is the meaning of subduing the earth, of having dominion? Do we do, do, do you believe that we need to rethink our mindset in terms of our theology? Yes, we should. Now, going forward, planet Earth is something that is very valuable, yet we oftentimes forget to take care of it. Now, what are the things that we take for granted in planet Earth that we should not? Number one, it's what? Oxygen. Do we need oxygen to stay alive? Now, let's have uh, just a one-minute exercise. Can you hold your breath for one minute now? Start. Hindi na ko kasarang. Okay? Kamo, sarangan nyo pa? Okay. Please stop it. You will die. Why? Because four minutes without oxygen, the human brain 
suffers severe damage. And after that, we die. Can you imagine that? Have you ever thought about that? We need trees to have oxygen. Here is the value of one adult tree. It breeds in 21.7 kilograms of carbon dioxide on a yearly basis. And do you know how much oxygen a single adult tree breathes out? It is enough to keep three people alive for one year. One tree for three. Remember that slogan. One tree for three. Can we repeat that? Begin. One tree for three. So if you saw or see an adult tree here on the campus, thank the Lord. Because that one tree can sustain three students in the campus per year. So we need to plant more trees in order for us to survive. Our survival depends on oxygen. Number two, our survival also depends on what? Water. How many days can you survive without water? Three days. Would you like to try it? <laughs> no. Why? Because our body is composed of what? 75% of our body is composed of water. Can you imagine that? Water flows through the blood and carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells. It also flashes our waste out of our bodies. So without water, we cannot digest or absorb food. So what do we need to take care of? We need to take care of our water system. Please remember that. Thirdly, what do we need in order to survive? Food. Okay? We need food to survive. How many days can you survive without food but with water? It's Science tells us it's about 21 days without food and just water. Meaning, in under one month, we will what? We will die without food. So let us take care of our what? Food supplies. In short, here is the thing for us to ponder. There is no life yet in Mars. Okay? There is no life yet in Venus. Earth is what? Our only home. Think about it. In this universe full of planets, some not yet even discovered. And this is unique. This is very unique. Earth is our only home. Now, here are some questions for you to ponder personally. When was the last time you planted the tree? Wow, very good. You planted the tree because of NSTP. But if not because of NSTP, have you ever thought of planting a tree? So I hope not just because of NSTP, but because of our personal theological conviction. Now, how do we take care of our water system? Think about it. How do we take care of our food supplies? Think about it. Now, lastly, every day should be Earth Day and not just in the month of April. Let me just leave you with some practical tips before I end. It starts with the word, the outline is the word Earth. Eat healthy foods. Okay? Mark this verse, Genesis 1.30. When you go back home, read this also. It says, I give you every green plant for food. That is what God said 
in Genesis 1.30. Sino nagabakal utan sa inyo sa may oy? Okay? O kung puro karne lang tanan. Okay? I give you every green plant for food. Number two, acknowledge that the word belongs to? Very good. Siling sang Psalms 24.1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. The next practical thing, remember the four R's. What are the four R's? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Always ni tatlo dugangan taisa. What is letter R? Rethink. Rethink of the practices that we are doing. Rethink. Always rethink, rethink, rethink. And letter T, let us thank God for His creation. No, every time we travel, let us thank God for His creation. You know what? The only campus here in Iloilo City with that great space in which we can take pictures of the sky and we have green grasses and everything can only be found here in Central Philippine University. Right? And we have to take care of it. We have to be joyful because we are here that every day we are being given the right amount of oxygen in order for us to study well. And lastly, let us what? Letter H. Read. Begin. Genesis 1.26, let me end with this. It says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our own image, in our own likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. That is the call of stewardship that God has entrusted to each one of us. I hope that all Centralians who are here right now will in one way or another in the history of mankind, they will say that in the year 2019 and so on and so forth, Centralians have done their part in taking care of planet Earth our only home. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Halandoon. The earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. So the earth is what we have in common and the link between man and nature should not be broken. Remember, oxygen, water, and food to survive. So before we proceed to our next speaker, let me remind everyone to please keep your cell phones and sit up straight. Para hindi ka matulog. At this point, we would like to call on Engineer Dimpna Sika Sigador for her topic on groundwater conservation and rainwater use utilization. Let's give her a round of applause. Hello. Good morning. Tell the person beside you, I'm glad you're here today. Glad good man kamo. Tinag smile kamo kay glad kamo. Liwatabi smile siya and tell him or her, I'm glad you're here today. We have a very interesting day today. There are many speakers. And I'm sure that you learned a lot from the previous speakers, and there will yet be many more. So now, our topic is about groundwater conservation and rainwater utilization. Amen? So, next slide, we will see here. Saton nga next slide.
Sige ah, ara na nga to, next slide, gapadulong na siya. But this is a picture of a building, actually a church building. Do you know where this is? No, it's, if you don't know, it's uh, somewhere north of Luzon, in the Pangasinan and Bulacan area. And this is a church building. And people used to go to this church walking. Subong na ano na siya. If you go there, you have to ride a... You have to ride a boat. Otherwise, mabasa ikaw. So, this happens not just during flood days. But this is already a regular happening in that area. So, why is this happening? There are places that we used to go to. Mahambal ka sa una, do hindi man siya baha. Do hindi man siya dalum. Subong bala, nagdalum na ang area nga ni. And it is flooded always. Are there places that you can think of? Where the situation is like that, maybe in your towns or barangays, let's go to the next. Daw hindi mag-respond aton clicker, so i-manual na lang nato, no? Sige, ah. So there are what we call Delta Cities. Tell the person beside you, Delta Cities. What are these cities? A study was made of some cities in the, in the world and they found out that there are cities that are vulnerable to land subsidence. Land subsidence is a term to mean sinking land. Singa dito pad mo, sinking land. Nagaunlod ang duta. And you see a very familiar place there. Anong familiar sa aton sa list? Manila. Would you believe I have friends in Manila and they are in Muntinlupa that their television is permanently placed over a styrofoam. Nga aman, nga anak styro all the time. Yes, very bright gijang in STP students in case magbaha because the area is usually flooded. So, pirmi, may mga gamit nila, nakapatong sa styro. So, when the floods come, nag lang siya. But Manila, we see here, is one of those Delta cities in the world. Only key cities are in here, but many places in the world are also sinking. Let's go to the next one. What about sea level rise? So, kaina, nagasink ang land. But there's also an issue of sea level rise. The other speakers have mentioned about this earlier. Even the ice glaciers in some parts of the world are melting. So, gasaka ang level sang tubig. And it is happening where? Is it happening in Iloilo? In the study of the following cities, ginstadihan nila ang cities nga ni? Maybe they will study more cities in the Philippines in the future. They said that if the global warming will rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius, just 1.5 globally, there will be a median of 3.2 meters of global sea level rise. Pila ka meters imo height? How many meters? Diin ang 3 meters. So when this happens, subong kung magkadto ta sa dagat, masiling ka, ah, taas ko sa dagat. But when it will rise, kagsigi na og ang duta, anong matabo sa ibang nga kabalayan, especially in coastal areas, anong matabo ihan? Ha? Sinking land, rising water level, Anong matabo sa ila? They will be flooded. Yes, correct. The area will be flooded. And it will not just be an occurrence once a year or twice a year, but regularly. How many of you live near coastal areas? Yes. Of course, kung three meters, it will not just be near the sea. It can go inland a far distance. But pag magtaas pagid ang global warming, if it warms sa more by 2 degrees centigrade, the increase in numbers sa mga tao who will be affected will be 
4 million in all these places. And imagine mo ang rise ng water level 5.2 meters. Grabe, ginayang saka niya na. It will cover so many barangays in Iloilo if that happens. And we pray, God forbid, that it won't. That's why we're studying here. That's why we're um, listening to lectures on this, reading materials on this, because we'd like to be prepared next. What causes land to sink? Let's read together. Number one, let's go. Groundwater extraction, tectonics, glacial, isostatic adjustments, natural sediment compaction, and oil and glass extraction. So there are many causes, and some of them are very technical, but our topic today is focused on ground water. Where we are, si Idalom Sini may ara nga, ground water. And suno sa aton ginbasa, one of the major causes of land sinking is ground water extraction. Sige, takuha ang tubig sa Idalom sang lupa. Next. So there are two major groups of water with regards to our water sources. One is groundwater, ara sa dalom, inyo mga bubun. Water nga ginagamit sa water refilling stations nga iban. But there's, yes, bomba sa tubig nga nagakuha man gihapon dito sa dalom. But there's another group of waters. These are surface, surface waters. Makita natin rivers, mga lakes, mga makita mo da, ng tubig lang sa palibot. What about Iloilo City? Diin gahalin ang tubig sa Iloilo City nga nagakadto sa aton mga gripo. Sa diin gahalin? Very good. Maasin dam. Halin ina sa maasin river. Tisino diring taga maasin? Yes. Palakpakan tang mga taga maasin be for sharing your water with us. Of course, maasin and surrounding areas. We're getting their, wa their, their water for MIWD use. But again, there's also groundwater that is being used. Next. So groundwater is our largest source of usable fresh water in the world, according to the U.S. Geologic Survey. And ang comparison sa groundwater, water under our feet, is it is like money in a bank. Kung damo gani ginawidro mo, sang sa gina-deposit, anong matabo? Maabot ginang panahon nga. Nag-deposit ka, subong, 5,000. Imo ginawidro, kay may deposit ka man sa una, 10,000. Kung sige, amo-amo sina, anong matabo? Maubos. Sige, nito pad mo, maubos. When you withdraw more than what was there, and we will read later that some of our ground water has been there for thousands of years. It will be exhausted. So groundwater depletion is primarily caused by sustained groundwater pumping. And major source of that is also rain. Nagabalik dito sa dalom. But natural movement of groundwater is gravity driven. So of course ang lupa we will not go into the details iba-iban nga klase. May ara man niya nga hindi magsink dayon tus dalom naga ilig lang as run off magkadto sa mga dagat, mga amusina. So kon wala kamon wala kita ga treat sa aton basura, aton ginagamit mga inorganic nga butang pag abot sang ulan diretso sa dagat. Anong ginainom dito sang isda? Aton mga basura. Mga halin sang aton nga uh, CR, sa aton mga toilet, sa aton nga mga bathrooms. Nagainom ang isda sang sunsilk shampoo. Ano pagid? 
Ga inom sang cream silk nga conditioner. I heard of some people nga siling nila nang isda sila sa kanal napit sa ila siling nila grabe. Ang hamot sang isda nga nakuha namon sa pugid ja. So even in those little things we need to pursue later we will see some of those action plans that we can uh, take next. So brief um, explanation lang ni, but we're already familiar with this in at least most of us that you have there imonga bumba and your bumba gets water from the ground. So mayara at the groundwater sa dalong pagitsina may ginatawag kita nga aquifer. And our groundwater is also shared Sometimes depende sa yung flow with others. An ano pa tinga laka kis anga na ubusan sang tubig ang area nga ni. Why? Because they are sharing underground sang ilang a water source. Me arak man kis a that you have water but your neighbor does not have. Why? Basi ilain man ang iyang a kasher sang iyang a tubig because down under there are what we call compartments man and the type of soil varies from one place to another let's go to the next so land subsidence or sinking land occurs when large amounts of groundwater has been excessively withdrawn next nan kis ating alak nga ang ang building naghilay uy nga ang nag nga ang nagnaog ang lupa of course, some of that, as we saw earlier, may mga tectonic, mga amuna, may mga iban nga earthquakes. But you will see here that if you continue to draw up water, ano nagakatabo sa dalom? How many of you may mga bubon sa inyo balay? Wala sang mayno sa exam. May mga bubon, may mga bumba. Yes, many of us. Sometimes you wonder, tasok lang bala, tubo lang ang ginbutang. Tingala ka, nga ang nga balas ang ginahigop sini. Kaysa dalong dito, natiphag, natiphag na. So kung sige, tiphag, natiphag, sa dalong, nagaanong buho dito, dako nga dako. That's why, hindi advisable nga ang imo nga bubon, nga tasok, lapit sa imo balay kay ti over the years gadako gadako ang buho nga na so kis ating ala ka uy nga ang nag nagusmod ang lupa diri because that is what will happen if you continue to excessively withdraw water from under yes next ara so kita na to na next so in the philippines there's a national mapping and resource information authority or namria According to their study, and their last study is 2009, according to this uh, um, uh, report, I think I got this from Manila Times. Atong kaina ang gaginbutang kong source at the beginning sang Manila Times. They have seen that Manila has sunk by 0.68 meter to 1.34 meters in 30 years. While a big part of groundwater subsidence also happens in other areas. Next. So groundwater extraction is the main cause of sinking land in Metro Manila and other areas. Next. Jakarta in Indonesia. Of course, you can see many pictures like this. If you open Google and look for sinking land, examples you will see many places like this and some of those pictures are here in the philippines for example jakarta is sinking by 25 centimeters per year and their government is thinking jakarta is the capital of indonesia as you know and the government is thinking of transferring the capital of indonesia to other places because of this situation next tanawa naghilay na ganing balay itong isa so what worsen sinking? Sinking is happening globally in many places. Not all places, but in many places. So rising population. Ga rise ang population, ga rise ang demand for water, damo ang naga pangutkot, damo ang naga uh, needs ng water. 
movement of people, especially urbanization. So when people are concentrated in an area, ang need for water on that area nagataas man. And of course, climate change. Next, pagbuka sang duta because of the dryness. naga evaporate man ang tubig sa dalom mayo lang kun maulanan maabsorb niya but if the dry season is very long it can evaporate a lot of the water so what could happen got change ang aton elevation there's damage there's increase in potential for flooding increased water shortage and water quality concerns if you did not know yet sa Iloilo ang seawater nagasulod na no Kaysa makita mo ang imo tubig, tingala ka nga, ang nga daw may mga salt nga nag-dry sa gripo. Have you seen that? Nga, ang ang tubig masin. Because we have been pumping out a lot of water. Ano nang nagasulod? It's already sea water in some areas. Next. So land subsidence, this is in the US. And they said this is the worst case of land subsidence. Sang so, una, ang... Ang ginimuan nila marker nga ang 1925 soil level ara sa babaw ho pinakababaw babaw gid subong ara na sa dalom 1977 so terribly ang pag sink next in some places they have designed out of uh, you know creativity and architecture but this could be a thing of the future according to others. You know, floating houses, ibanya nga areas, may ang balay ara na sa stilts. There are many countries nga ang balay nila ara sa stilts. Some gusto lang nila art, but some really do that out of need. Kay perti ang flooding sa ilang area. Even if the rain is not very strong, the uh, flood lang get next. So what, can, what actions can we take? We have heard a lot from the previous speakers, and this may not be really something new to you. We can promote awareness and stewardship. Your R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, rethink. Some have come up with five R's, six R's, and so many R's. We can harvest rainwater. Ano ang harvest rainwater? Pwede salod mo, or kung ano man nga pamagi that. We are able to make use of rainwater. We can continue to plant trees. Sino nag-participate sa tree planting? Mangkutatupad mo, pila ka trees, gintanong mo. Oh, iba niyo wala. Pwede pa. Before the semester ends. Then practice phytoremediation. It's uh, really more of planting uh, things that will absorb or clean water and push for laws, regulations, and others that promote environmental stewardship and organic agriculture. Kung sige tabala gamit, have harmful pesticides. They go to our water bodies. Sino makaon sang isda nga nag-inom sang sunsilk? Sino ang makaon sang isda to nga nagkaon sang aton nga mga waste items ang ginpadala sa dagat? Mabalik lang yapon sa tao. Even if the sea is diluted, makita ninyo kisa, there are sharks nga nagakapatay because damo nagi plastic na kaon nila. And that's the solid waste. What we cannot see sometimes are the toxic chemicals that go to the sea. So that's why I have shifted, for example, personally, may mga ginabaligya da nga, maskin organic shampoo. You can use mga damo organic things, even in your laundry. And I hope that some of you will formulate, hello, hi. hi, I hope that some of you or many of you will formulate products, formulate products that are good for our environment. I have seen some students in Luzon, they have formulated fertilizer and they are selling it online, organic fertilizer. And do you know how much the farmers spend on organic fertilizer and all the other fertilizers? Imagine if you can formulate something like that. I saw this group of students on Facebook, and they are using their earnings to finance their studies. 
So what can you formulate as students? Why maybe you can explore grouping together? May mo tabalas ang organic nga soap. Kada mo da, um, you know, um, methods sa internet that you can Google. Organic uh, shampoo, organic lotion, many other organic things. Many organic farm inputs. Hello? Sing ganito pad mo, you have the brain. Sing ganito pad mo, pagid, you were gifted with the brain. I hope that one of you or some of you here will formulate mga organic dishwashing liquid. Imagine how much of that goes to our seas. Organic laundry soap and so many products like those. Of course, sino naman diri ang mga SK officers? Paliwag bayaw? Yes, paliwag tindog SK officers. We'd like to recognize you. SK. Paliwag tindog. Sang nagkampanya, bala ka mo sang eleksyon, pero may kamuga tindog sa stage mo. We'd like to see you, SK officers. We're proud of you. Yes? Iban pa, SK officers. Paliwag na tindog. SK officers, in your areas, you can push for ordinances. Singa dito pad mo, push for ordinances that will promote waste segregation and all the other things that we have been discussing here. You can even host lectures like this in your barangay. Pwede ka mo mag-suggest, why don't we host something like this at on barangay? Then, from measures that promote uh, water projects like rainwater harvesting, and we need to continue benchmarking. We need to look at what other countries are doing. For example, Singapore is as big as Gimaras. Tingali naman to padmo. Singapore is as big as Gimaras. Amo lang gidna siya. And in the years back, wala siya sa sarili nga tubig. But now they are recycling all the water that they have. Next, phytoremediation, we mentioned that earlier. Next, recycling rain, ang ulan, we can catch just using mga pails, drums, himo tapamagia, that we can make use of the rain even in our households. And when you design, even in your barangays, when you have basketball courts, iban nga places, they put a cistern under the basketball, uh, what's this, quadrangle, to store rainwater. So magamit nila. Next. This is a project of our chairman, Pastor Prim Bergara. And this helped a school in Bajangan. Sang una mga bata agahakot pa tubig. Now not anymore because they are using rainwater harvesting. Na contribute mga parents to have drums in untaga Bajangan so that the kids do not have to bring a small pail every day. Imagine sang una, they have to bring a small pail every day. Now not anymore. This can be done in your own schools where you came from, can be done in our households, can be done in your barangays. Next. Google this, 25 rainwater harvesting ideas. There are so many other sources that you can look at. Next. And use eco bricks instead of concrete. May makita ka mo kisa, naka bricks, pero sa dalom si Minto. The purpose nga ang bricks, tani, is so water can Sip through. Manaog siya sa duta. Next. Look at Singapore, at what they're doing. As I said, they used to buy water from Malaysia. Almost all of their water supply. But now, because of their recycling, they're even doing desalination, they're about to be independent now with terms of water supply. We can learn a lot from them. They said they did not have their water source before. But now, they are becoming the global hub on good wastewater practices. Next. 
And this is my last slide. And let's read this together. Galatians 6, 9, read. Gal cannot be mocked. What we sow, we reap. So let's exercise stewardship. Thank you very much and God bless everyone. Thank you, Mama Mi. We, we learned a lot and we heard things we never heard before. And this topic is a very timely topic for we need this information for us to act now. Water, ganika ginano, part of our, kung wala water, hindi kita ka survive, right? So it's a need for us to really take care of our water resources. To continue on the topic biodiversity, its importance to daily living, let us all welcome Dr. Stella G. Fernandez, our Dean in College of Arts and Sciences. I'm just checking my video if it is functioning. My sounds. Okay, so good morning everyone. Ang love ay parang kalikasan. Nawawala kapag nababaliwala. Okay, okay, so thank you. Thank you. Ang relasyon ay parang kalikasan. Tumatagal kapag iniingatan. Huwag mong gawing kalikasan ang partner mo dahil hindi sa lahat ng oras kailangan mo siyang pakinabangan. Okay, so that's the purpose. We can apply these different codes in our relationship and also to our Mother Earth. Good morning once again. I'm Mom Stella and I will be dealing biodiversity, its importance to daily living. Okay, sorry. So my talk, the outline, what is biodiversity, and I will introduce to you the endemic species in Panay, the benefits of biodiversity, effect of biodiversity, and our participation. So the more variety, the better society. So it is just like us. Marami tayo dito, pero nag-iiba ka. You are unique. So biodiversity, what does it mean? So the diversity, it is a number and variety of species of plant and animal in a region. So we have here, for example, sorry for the picture, the banana, we have there the cash crops. You have there the coffee. Then the trees, we can get oxygen from it. And at the same time, it gives us shade. Also the kitchen crops and the textile, mga cottons. These are coming from plants. For the animals, we have there the bees. Sorry. They are pollinators and so therefore they continue. They will allow reproduction to continue. The insects, pollinators also, and then the farm animals, sources of our dairy and as well as our meat. So these are important to us. These are important to us where the farmers had 
to produce in order to feed the society. Now, let me introduce to you one term, means endemism. Endemic, I think you heard about that word. So it is the ecological state of species being unique. So si Lingko Kaina, unique. To a defined geographic location such as island, nation, country, or other defined zone or habitat. Organisms that are indigenous to a place, that means dira lang gid siya, are not endemic if they are found elsewhere. So, kung sa panay lang, indigenous. Kung makita siya sa iban, so hindi siya ya endemic. Okay. So, we have here the report from the Panay a Philippine News Agency. So, okay. What does it, uh, the report was all about? So it stated that in Panay, endangered species sightings raised up to 18.5%. And what are these different species? So this is the map of Panay. And I know some of you are living on this area. For example, the Valderrama. Okay, Balderama is from Antique. Anybody from Antique? Okay, so Antique na di o pandan si Baste, Kolasi. Okay, ang dire naman ng area Panay or Aklan, Ibahay from Ibahay. Okay, Aniway, Aniway, Lambunao, Kalinog. Okay, so these are the areas. As reported by the PNA, where the five species are endemic. And so, for example, Rafflesia, siguro popular kamo sang una ang news ang Rafflesia is only in Malaysia. Ara siya sa may kulasi. So this one is the Majaas Mountain. So endemic ni sila lang gid sa Panay. The Visayan warty pig. Okay, dira makita na di damo siya actually hmm? sa Malinao. Okay, some of this I didn't uh, visited yet. Okay, then we have the Panay monitor lizard. Ari sila nga mga color and the Philippine hawk eagle. Ara siya sa Tibiao nga area. So sa Kolasi Rich amo na di ang study area and some. Uh, are present in Sibalom Natural Park. Okay, so for close-up view, amo nang itsura, yeah, the Visayan Reed Hornbill. And this is being cared in Mariit, Inca, Lambunao. Sino taga Lambunao? So, dira gina culture, gina care nila, and then they have to release it in the wild ones. Okay. And this Bisayan reed hornbill, it is critically endangered. Okay, next, the species vulnerable to extinction. Present man siya sa Panay, kag sa Negros. So, the Bisayan spotted deer. So, what is that Bisayan spotted deer? Sorry. Vulnerable to extinction. Next, the baboy. Ramo, nakita ako man siya pagkadto namon sa kilid sang suba sang uh, lambunaw. Okay? Ano ya ang status ng baboy ramo? Critically endangered as well. The monitor, panay monitor lizard. It is the mabitang. So siguro ang iban sa inyo, uh, we were able to visit last few years when you were in high school. Uh, we uh, the, bi uh, the biodiversity on wheels. So we tried to introduce this big five in Panay. So the Mabitang, it is endangered in IUCN red list, primarily because of the loss of its habitat to logging activity. So take note because of some human intervention, ginlag probably that. 
is being used for building and even for charcoal making. And another, it is also hunted for food and has been over hunted, making it rare. Hindi inishaya ang halo, hindi na shaya halo. Okay, so that is also endangered. Okay, this one, there are two species of Rafflesia present. So present ni siya sa may lambunaw, igbaras. Kag sa may si Balom Natural Park. Sinona ang mga taga igbaras, taga antiki, or kalinog, nakakita sang Rafflesia. Very good, ako wala pagid ko kakita, and that is really my aim. So there are two Rafflesia lubata and the Rafflesia speciosa. So these are the species which are only endemic in Panay. So we should care for this because they are endangered and vulnerable. Hindi na tamagkanto pa sa iba nga mga lugar. Okay. So are ang report, no? Kay gusto ko ma-relate nyo. We are on this region, okay? Sa aklan, makita ang dulungan or hornbill. Amuni nga mga sapat, okay? Aklan, Antique, kag Iloilo, sa Lambunaw, sa San Remigio, Patnungon, Balderama. So probably you can uh, relate kung tagadira ka mo. Ang warty pig, okay? The warty pig is present also in aklan, in Antique area, and in Lambunaw. Spotted deer, only few. And then the mabitang, so these are not present in Barbasa, Lawaan, and Bugasong. Not present also in Patnugong and uh, San Remigio, present in Lambunao. Rafflesia speciosa, of course, present in Sibaste, Colasi, Barbasa, Lawaan, Bugasong, Baldirama. Kag sa may San Remigio and Lambunao. So all the others, the Tariktik, Hornbill, the Cloud Rat, and the Monkey can be seen on those areas shown in the map. Okay, to review, what is biodiversity? So I will just give you the simplest definition of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the rich variety of life on Earth. It comes from the two words, bio means... Diversity means? Okay. This variety on earth and its interdependence is called biodiversity. So everything is interconnected or dependent on everything else. So may connect ako sa imo. May connect din kayo sa kanya? Wala? Okay, make a connection so that you can link this one. So that means the tree has the effect on plants. And some of these, the droppings of birds, pwede siya maghimo ng mga seeds and then grow again for that new plant. Okay, there are three levels of diversity. Kay kalapad ni sang topic ng biodiversity. First, Variety of genes. So, for example, in this hall, this is a biodiversity and a variety of genes. So, for example, you have there. Okay, what's that? Poodle. Okay. Poodles, beagles, and rottweilers are all dogs. But they are not the same because their genes are different. So the difference in our genes make us all different. Okay, the second variety of species. Scientists group things into distinct species. And you know what? Since during your kindergarten days, you sang this Bahay Kubo. Kasa ulo pa ka mo? Okay, okay, what are the... Do you need to sing? Bahay, ready, sing! Kahit munti, faster, ang halaman doon ay sari-sari, sing kamas at talong, okay? Sigarilyas, sitaw, okay, stop. 
So those part belong to or those species sitaw, bataw, patani. Sa beans or leguminous. So sang kinder nga daan ka balo na kamo mag-classify. Ano pa lang? Kondol, patula, opot. Okay. Ano na siya? It's another group of plants. They belong kun sa scientific classification Cucurbitaceae. Mga sa upo, mga melon na belong na sila. Okay, what else? At saka mayroon pa Labanus mustasa. Okay, the Labanus mustasa, these are biennial plants and so on. So spices spices nang sa ulihi. Dira nga daan gin group na. So when you were in kinder, probably you don't know that you were already identifying plants. Okay. So the third is variety of and within ecosystem. So the coral reefs, la in man ang iya ng mga species dera. Ang grasslands, la in man ang makita nyo sa grasslands, and also in the rainforest. So each one is different with its unique own composition of living things, and that is now part of biodiversity. So, the variety of genes, species, and ecosystems make up our planet's biodiversity. Okay, kay na ba anta na, what are now the benefits of biodiversity? Some of those were mentioned by the previous speaker. Biodiversity gives us una livable, okay, the livable planet. So ano ni siya nga picture? It gives us air to breathe, oxygen, as mentioned by Pastor Neil Kaina. Second, ano siya? Okay, healthy crops. So dapat amon ng kwanon tano. If you hear about that. Antioxidant. Basta tanum gani, vegetables or fruits, they are rich of antioxidant. Bisan hindi na kamu magbakal pa to sa mga iba na ang nginabaligya. Kaun lang kamu laswa. These are already rich of antioxidant. Kag masiling ta, antioxidant is anti-cancer. Basta tanan nga laswa, nga, hindi na bala kamu magluto, gid kun mga fruits. Or mga pipino, you don't need to cook anymore. Makasave pa ka mo sang energy. And then, the other is clean water. It's not merely water. During our time, there are a lot of pump well. So, bong yung mineral water na because our surrounding is not safe anymore. So, another, biodiversity gives us the things that we need. Sin o sa inyo gusto magmasakit? Mahal magmasakit. This is what we call health is wealth. Mahal magpa-hospital. So eat the right kind of food and we already have sources of medicines. Halina sa tanom. So this can be synthesized na lang ang iban. Okay? Di ba kung magsakit busong nyo, ano gina-ano gani? Gina-crusan dyan ka ano ha? Hala, why? Hmm? Kaluya, okay, because luya has the medical value. Okay, next, di ba? Clothes and many more. Ang bayo ta from the fabrics, and then paper, wood, plastics, and so on. And then food source. So aside from the vegetables, we need also protein. Okay. Ano na siya ba? Nanamitan, gid ka mo. Favorite nyo, gid ya, permeya ang meat. You eat less vegetables. Mas paborito nyo pa, gid ni? Oh, na. Pero damo na kolesterol. Dali na siya sa aton, biodiversity. Sa baboy ramo, mas nami. Kung ulit siya nun, ang baboy ramo. Mas nami man ka nun, ang manok nga bisaya. Okay. So, sources of food. Dab gives by the biodiversity. And then there is also biodiversity gives us bright ideas. I know you are bright students. So the first one, transportation. Where did the inventors or planes 
of planes and submarines get their ID design ideas. Ang eroplano di inhalin from the bird, ang structure, okay? Ang submarine from the whales. Okay, new materials. Para o ano na siya? Sino paghampang di sang damang? Sang elementary nyo gampang, gid ka mo sang damang. Hindi lang damang-damang ha? Okay, damang lang. So according to this, spider silk is the strongest natural fiber known stronger than steel of equal weight. And it's more elastic than nylon. And scientists, so by the biodiversity, the researchers or scientists can take subjects from the biodiversity. Scientists research spider silk and other natural products to learn more about how we might manufacture materials that work like natural ones. Okay. Biodiversity gives us the great outdoors. Sino gusto na magtambay git sa big field? Okay, provided by the grass. Our natural areas are great places for outdoor activities, sports and play. Bala mo ako yung lagawan ko and my family. So example, ari sa diini siya, hiking. Pasaka na siya sa may Mayun Volcano and we are traversing through the Lava, pag erupt, and then also going there. So my fan, kon sa biodiversity, and for some sa Villa Escudero, you have there the kayaking. Okay, without biodiversity, there would be fewer places to go and less to see. So most of you like to go out during summer and sem break and or even during long vacation weekend. Okay, natural beauty. So these are the collections of the places where we visited. The initia, sino taga Negros? Oh, ano na? That is the Century Tree in Canlaon City. Okay, this one, sa Tupi, ni siya may Sunflower Garden. And uh, Mindanao has a beautiful siling sang una nila. Mindanao is a promised land. Because more vegetables and uh, fruits are growing there. Okay, this one is from Kapis. Sino taga Kapis da? Sa Espasyo. Okay. This one, are uh, sorry. Oh, sige lang. This one, ang may mga pine trees bala. Sa DN. And then this one, kabalo ka mo kun di ini. Hmm? Sa Gintubdan La Carlota. It is cooler than Baguio. Malamig because of this plants. Okay. So hopefully, o hindi lang ma-distract so that it could maintain the good environment. Okay. Cultural tradition. So for cultural tradition, this is the bamboo flute. So the Indians tried to use this and there's a meaning for that, no? Sa ilang bamboo flute. Then, this one, the rattles. In their ceremony. Okay. This one is the salmon that represents, so some of you, the mga Chinese, riches, okay, and wealth. So they tried to uh, use these different symbols of biodiversity. This one is the krathong in uh, Vietnam and Thailand that is made up of banana leaves. Kaginapalutaw nila into the river and once it will float they have to give their wish sa kratong okay ara siya and finally you have here the decoration the necklaces the indians and the africans they tried to use it because there are symbols of wealth as well okay so another is our biodiversity has the natural way of curing disease. Subong anong uso gani? Dingge. Kay na mahilig ka mo magpangkwa damang, wala na sang web to trap the insects. 
So healthy ecosystem can better withstand and recover a variety of disasters. During our time, wala man sang dinggi. Kag nagapang tutod, man kami sang una, kaso lang this time, it's not already allowed. Pero ang pagtutod na sang dahon, may benefit na siya tani because in a process of photosynthesis, they need car plants need carbon dioxide in order to produce food. However, since our environment is already having that abundant sources of carbon dioxide, ang pagtutod, hindi na. Pero sang una, wala na siya because magtutod ka. That is also to guwaon, uh, magyapon ang mga sapat. Okay, to defray. Okay. So I will not discuss the carbon sequestration. Actually, that is for the plants to absorb carbon dioxide. Now, what could be, could my positive effect, there will also be a bad effect. So biodiversity, we, okay, we're losing it or we're losing them. So for example, human population gr is growing very fast. So we use up valuable resources like woods, obrahon tabalay, and so on. And we even take fishing in a rapid way, use the dynamite so that you can have more uh, catch. So they can replace, then they can, or they, we try to use them faster than they can be replaced. Damo ang aton nga consumption compared to the production. Okay. Another is, okay, the habitats are lost as we take over land for homes, for factories, and farms. Sang una, ang sipiyo gamay pa lang ang building. Even in the nearby towns, gamay pa lang sa mga subdivisions. But the farmlands are now being converted into condominiums and buildings and houses. Wala na tatamnan. So, at anong aton nga gin remedy? Ginbutangta na lang sa may pat. But the sustainability is not. Okay. So, what is the Endangered Species Act? This is universal. The law that protects animals and plants that are endangered of going extinct. So, there's a law that would protect these different species so that we will make use of them. Okay. A lot of people are trying to save biodiversity. Okay. Tatlo lang gid. Ang iba ni sa inyo, gin mention na. So, three only so that you can easily remember. First, can you please read? Okay. Number two, shop at a local farmer's market and bring your own reusable bag instead of taking a disposable plastic one. Sang pagkado naman sa Boracay, ang makdo, ang ilang spoon, it's no longer plastic. Made of wood na siya. Wooden spoons na gagmay. Okay, third, reduce, reuse, recycles, okay, so on. Think before you use extra lights. Organize a clothes swap with a bunch of friends. Hindi ka mo sagad pinamakal. Swap lang to. Okay? That's why may mga garage sale. Consider what you buy. Be an environment-friendly shopper. And make sure you and your families recycle everything you can. Okay. Sir, please play the video.
the message is clear. Okay, and then we have this sustainability. We have to sustain. God created everything for us. And so we should be good stewards of this. Society, configuring society so that each person can meet their own needs and greatest potential while preserving biodiversity and natural ecosystem and planning for future generation to maintain its potential. Okay. This. Sin oni? Kamo na siya. Biodiversity is life. Biodiversity is our life. You are an integral part of nature. Your faith is tightly linked with biodiversity. The huge variety of the animals and plants, the places they live, and their surrounding environments all over the world. Take your part. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Stella, for another add-on information on our uh, bucket ano na siya, list of words to ponder upon. At this point in time, we would like to call on Engineer Chris Sam Joy Haspe, our faculty in the College of Engineering, for the topic, Household Waste, Water, and Water Pollution Management. We're close to the end, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning, NSTP students! Tulog na sila. Bugtaw pa ka mo? Sabi, yeah. raise your hand. Kaway-kaway naman dyan. Wala gidya energy. Alas jis pa lang. Ang iban sa inyo, bago pa lang gani. Abot, wala na energy. Kita git ka mo, no? So today I am here to talk about household wastewater and water pollution management. So when we say household water, what do we mean? Household water means din halin. Sa diin? Sa balay ni Sino? Ni mo? Nakon sa balay natin tanan, okay? So I will introduce you to the main character of this discussion. Kilala nyo ang tubig? Nakakita na kamo tubig? Sure kamo? How well do you know water? How well do you know water? We all know that the Earth is composed of 71% water, right? Yes. And out of 71%, only 3% is fresh water. What does that mean? Only 3% is what we can use. Only 3% is not salinated. The rest is a super saturated solution we call seas and oceans. A super saturated solution of salt. Hindi natun ma inom. We cannot readily use. What we can readily use is only 3%. However, out of that 3%, 1.7% naturally occurs as what? Solid mountains of? Of what? Of what? Of ice, correct. 1.7% is frozen. Ara sa North Pole, ara sa South Pole, hindi mo masag-ob. Pilabilin. Out of 3%, 1.7% 1.7% uh, is ice. Pilabilin sa atun. 1 point? Ba, alam, alam sa math. 1.3% lang ang mabilin sa atun. 
And that means 1.3% of fresh water to be shared by 8 to 9 billion people. 1.3% of fresh water. Tururo nga, una, tuntanan. Seven continents. 200 plus countries, 100 plus countries. And that means one in every 10 person in the world has no access to fresh water. Wala sila inog paligo, wala sila ilim nun, wala sila inog bunyag sa ilang mga tanom, inog hugas ang ilang mga pinggan, inog paligo sa ilang mga ido. Diriya sa aton, dogi na take for granted lang naton. Right? Why is water important? Water is one of the most taken for granted natural resource in the whole world. It is very underrated, but it is one of the most powerful resource sa bilog ng kalibutan. Do you believe that water is powerful? Yes or no? Yes, water is very powerful. Let me tell you a secret. Water is the only substance sa bilog ng kalibutan that occurs naturally in three states. Meaning, naturally nagaform ang tubig into three states. Anong states of matter naton gani? Solid, liquid, and gas. And water naturally occurs as Solid, liquid, and gas. Hindi mo na siya pagpiliton, hindi mo na siya pag-ipariak, hindi mo na siya pagpaligban. Solid in the form of icebergs, ice caps, liquid in the form of our rivers, our lakes, and our seas and our oceans. And finally, gas in the form of water vapor in the atmosphere. Only water among all the substances in the whole world exist in three states naturally. Another fact, your body is how many percent water? Pila? Pila? 70 to 75 percent water, correct. Right? And if you feel thirsty, kung nauhaw ka, to the brink of dehydration, you know how many percent of water you lose? When you feel thirsty, kung nauhaw ka gid, to the brink of dehydration, dumalipong ka na. Pila ka percent sang tubig na dula sa lawas mo? What's your guess? 50? Lower. 5? Lower pa gid. 1 to 2 percent lang at tubig na dula sa lawas mo. Feeling mo, dumalipong ka na sang kauhaw. Imagine that. Only 1% to 2%. Let's go to your organs. To your brain and to your heart. Sige. When it comes to water content, your brain and your heart, patas lang. Okay? Both are composed of 73% water. So in terms of water content, Water component or water content, hindi na uuna ang utak sa puso or na uuna ang puso sa utak. Patas lang sila nga, dua. But when it comes to breathing in your lungs, how many percent water? How many? How, how many percent? You have 83% of water in your lungs. Meaning it is much more important to breathe because you have you need 83% water in your lungs. See the power of water over your body. Water can also be an energy source. Hydropower is the largest or the world's largest source of renewable energy. And when it comes to hydropower and renewable energy, we have minimal 
losses minimal waste. Wala kita naga produce additional waste. Three major sectors were identified to be the highest water users. The agriculture sector accounts for 70% of water usage. Industry accounts for 20%. And the domestic sector accounts for 10% of water usage. So 1.3% natun kagina nga nabilin para magamit natun. 70% nagakadto kay agriculture sa mga manguguma sa mga farmers sa aquaculture man aton sa naga provide sa aton sang food 20% goes to the industries to the power plants manufacturing industries factories etc and 10% goes to the domestic industry and who is involved in the domestic industry? Sino? We are all directly involved in the domestic industry because domestic industry is dominated by residential areas, subdivisions, commercial areas. Okay? So 10% lang ang aton water consumption. Now, have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered every day how much water you consume? Napaligban mo na, bala pagbugtaw mo sa aga mo, pila ay han ako nga nagasto nga tubig. Pila ay han gin paligo ko, pila ay han gin inum ko, pila ay han ang gin kaon ko, pila ay han. So what we have here is a graph of water usage areas sa balay naton, tanan. 15% of the water we use panglaba. 27% sa pagpaligo. Assuming nagapaligo kita tanan. 16% sa kitchen sa pagluto. 18% for your to toilet. 12% bathroom top, meaning sa pagpanut brush. Imagine na nut brush ka lang, 12% gid kag nang hilamos. 6% sa basin, and others not mentioned here, composed of another 6%. From the data of the UN, per capita, per day of usage or, or consumption of one person is 136 gallons. 136 gallons, pila na siya in liters. That is 514 liters of water. 500 liter, 514 liters of water gin paligo mo, gin toothbrush mo, gin inum mo, gin flush mo sa imo nga toilet, everything gin panglabas ang imo nga bayo, gin luto sang imo pagkaon. Can you imagine how much 514 liters of water is? Kita ka mo sang blue drum, ang dlag ko nga blue drum, ang abo ni kataas. One of that is 200 liters. So 514 means dua hagtunga nga amuna nga dram. Ikaw lang isa nagamit. Only one person. That is an average done by the UN. And this 514 liters nga ginagamit ni mo because you used it, you contaminated it. Gin contaminate ni mo na kon sang tanan nga tao nga ari diri sa Rose Memorial Auditorium. 514 liters multiplied by the number of persons inside this auditorium. How much is that? That is too much. And guess what? How many percent of that 514 liters gets treated? Pila ay hanang matreat natun? 
ma manage, ma dispose properly, return to the environment without even having additional harm to the environment. Eighty percent of contaminated water is released to the environment without adequate treatment. 514 multiplied by the number of people here multiplied by 0.8. That's the amount of water nga ginabalik natun sa environment without treatment. That is from UNESCO 2017, a report, a World Water Report. Ang ginaisip natin, domestic pa lang, wala natin ginaisip ang industry, kag ang agriculture. And that's how much water, imagine nyo lang kada isa katawo. Now, you ask yourself, where does this contaminated water go? Din siya nagakad to. Naligo ka lang. Nagpaligo ka lang sang imo nga ido, nagcar wash ka lang, nanghugas ka sang pingganti tapos mo na ya imo nga chores, wala ka na na labot kung diin makadto ang tubig, right? Right? Wrong. Because water is a finite resource. When we say finite resource, gakaubos ang matinlo nga tubig. The amount of water 1 million years ago from the start of the earth Sang nagsugod ang kalibutan, pareho lang gihapon sa amount of water sa subunga adlaw. Because we have what we call the water cycle. Gabalik-balik lang ang tubig. Maulan, manginsuba, mabalik siya as a cloud. Maulan naman liwat, manginsuba, mabalik na naman siya sa cloud. Sulit-sulit lang. But it becomes a finite resource because of the contamination nga ginubra natin. Because of our negligence to not treat our water. And contaminated water, if left untreated, becomes wastewater. And if, hindi pagid kita magbugtaw sa kamatuuran, that water is a finite resource, and that we are running out of access to fresh, usable, clean water, this will happen. Water pollution. So it's a chain reaction. Kung mag-pollute kita sang tubig, do you think may magamit ka pa in the future? Do you think you will still have something to drink, something to take a bath with, ma toothbrush ni mo? Basically, magamit for your everyday use. If we leave water untreated, return it to the environment. Most probably not, right? So you have to do something about it. And today I'm here to convince you that you have to do something as a student. What can you do to contribute to the solution? Let's define first wastewater based on the definition of the United Nations. Wastewater is defined as a combination of one of mo or more of the following domestic effluent coming from residences, commercial buildings, consisting of black water, black water, excreta, urine, and fecal sludge, and gray water, kitchen and bathing wastewater, water from commercial establishments and institutions, including hospitals. Industrial effluent, storm water, and other urban runoff. Agricultural, horticultural, and aquacultural effluent either dissolve, dissolve or as suspended matter. This was based from Corcoran et al. 2010. Amunang definition niya sa wastewater. So, wastewater is not just a single contaminated water, but it is a combination of all contaminants coming from the agriculture industry, from the from the industry, manufacturing industry, power plant industry, and from the domestic se sector. But for the sake of today's discussion, 
because my topic is on household wastewater and water pollution management, we'll just take into consideration the first definition, domestic effluent. Now, based on the definition, how many, uh, what is the composition of your domestic effluent? Anong composition sang imo domestic effluent based on the previous definition? You have? Hello, are you still with me? Wala nagid. What is the composition of your domestic wastewater? It is on the PowerPoint presentation, flashed right in front of you, and still you cannot notice it. Pareho man sang, wala na lang. Sang nag-agi nga, classmate mo nga, dugay mo na natulog, pero wala, yaka natulog balik. Pareho man ni siya sa inyo. Ginatulog na ka mo, hindi pa ka mo kakita. What is the composition of your domestic wastewater? Gray water and what? Gray water and black water. Gray water comes from your bath, bathroom, sinks, washing machines. And your black water comes from your toilets, dishwashers, kitchen drains, fecal, uh, uh, urine, sludge. That is your black water. So they are very distinct, right? Now, in an ideal setting, in, I in an ideal setting, all of these types of water in a domestic area, urbanized residential area, there should be a wastewater treatment facility, centralized. Meaning, from your homes, masulod siya sa sewage, or sa sewerage system naton, or a piping system, and proceed to a central system wherein all of the wastewater from, let's say, the whole of the subdivision or the whole of the city will get treated. In that treatment facility, several techniques are applied. My filtration, sedimentation, coagulation, chemical adjustments, neutralization, activated sludge, etc., etc. Depending on kung anong kasulod nga wastewater sa EA, the wastewater will undergo these different processes and will be classified. These processes will be classified into primary treatment, secondary treatment, and tertiary treatment if necessary. Kung kinahanglan, gid. Okay? Now, anong basihan? Kung ang im or what will be the basis if pwede mo na ma-release sa environment ang treated water mo from this treatment facility. The basis would be depending on the requirement of the law. We have what we call in the Philippines the Clean Water Act of 2004 or RA 9275 wherein it is stated there, specified there, ang standards for the acceptable values of parameters for the water na pwede i-release naton in the environment. So they measure color, measure odor, BOD, chemical oxygen demand, the pH, alkalinity, total solids, and a lot more parameters. So it is not easy to treat wastewater in a treatment facility, but it is possible. In Iloilo City, do we have a centralized wastewater treatment facility? May arak bala? Do we have? Yes or no? Do we have? I don't think so. We don't have a wastewater treatment facility that caters to the whole of Iloilo City para magtreat sang wastewater naton. So what we have, if we do not have this type of facility, Or here are some examples. Here are some examples wherein they have a centralized wastewater treatment facility. We have the Baguio Sewage Treatment Plant. We have Tagig and Makati Sewage Treatment Plant. Sarangani Province and also the Davao Province have centralized wastewater treatment facilities. But if, like in, Hilo, in Iloilo City, wala kita sang centralized treatment facility, we can have a domestic wastewater treatment system. So what is a domestic wastewater treatment system? Please play the video. Click. 
just click the ano. Here is what you can do to maintain your domestic wastewater treatment system. If your home is not connected to the main sewer network, then a domestic wastewater treatment system can treat and dispose of your household wastewater effectively when it is properly constructed and maintained. This will keep waters clean and protect human health and the environment. There are many sources of wastewater in the home. Toilets, kitchen sinks, washing machines, dishwashers and showers. Wastewater can be treated by a treatment system, such as a septic tank or advanced treatment system, that's in good working order. To operate a treatment system properly, remember the following. Exclude grease, excessive bleach or chemicals, food, disposable items and rainwater from your system. Have the system inspected and pumped out regularly. Check for foul smells or pools of partially treated liquids sitting on the ground near the system. If effluent forms a pond, overflows or pollutes a well, seek specialist advice. Have your well tested, particularly after heavy rain, to ensure your drinking water is safe. Don't enter a treatment system as it may release poisonous gases. Ensure all manhole covers are secure. Keep all records. This is how a system typically works. Wastewater flows from the house to the first chamber of the tank. Heavier solids settle to the bottom and lighter solids such as grease and paper float to the top forming a layer of scum. Effluent flows from the first chamber to the second where the process is repeated. Partially treated effluent flows into the percolation area where it is distributed through a network of pipes. The effluent then filters through gravel and soil to remove bacteria before it enters groundwater. Meanwhile, the solids and scum form a sludge that needs to be removed regularly from the tank. Visit your local authority website for more information or www.epa.ie. Thank you for watching. So that is a septic tank. Sino sa inyo sa balay niyo may septic tank or septic system? Wala, good. Some of you raise their hands sa So a septic system is the most common system of wastewater treatment nga gina-employ or gina-construct natin sa aton mga balay. If we have the space for it, it's a very simple technology. You just need one tank na may two chambers and, the, and then a perforated piping system. So basically what you are doing is that you are separating the solids, let's say, ang uh, feces ninyo coming from your toilets, from the liquid part of it. So, ma-submerge ang feces, the liquid part will just flow to the other tank. And then, once the other tank is full, masulod siya sa perforated piping system ninyo. And the perforated piping system, when we say perforated, ang mga tubo may buho-buho. Once nga mapuno ang tanke, ang septic tank, masulod ang tubig dito sa piping system ni mo nga may mga buho, kag masalupsup lang siya sa duta. And the soil will serve as filter for bacteria and other microorganisms. That's why it is important nga permi nyo pahubsa ng inyo nga septic tank. Hindi nga pagka-install nyo sa septic tank, pabayaan nyo na na siya for 25 years. Hindi nyo siya pagpahubsan. Okay? So you have to pump out kung anong ara sa sulod, the fecal matter that is inside your septic tank to maintain the quality of the septic tank. Another technique for wastewater treatment sa inyong mga balay, if you do not have a space for a septic system, because a septic system sometimes requires a very uh, huge area, kung wala ka mo space and medyo gotok sa inyo area, you can install a cesspool. What is a cesspool? Basically, um, tamburong lang na siya, naging buslutan mo sa kilid, and then from your toilet, mag-flush ikaw, madiritsyo siya sa tamburong, 
And then, ang imong tamburong, of course, is still layered with sand, gravel, etc. to filter those solids nga pwede mag-filter. And then, you just let it sip. Masalupsop lang siya dayon asta sa groundwater ni mo. But this type of system is actually not that encouraged because the only filter system that you have here is sand and gravel and there is still a possibility nga ang bacteria will go to the groundwater. Kag ang groundwater nga na tanan sa aton, halos tanan sa aton, may bubun sa balay na aton, right? Amunang ginapaligo ninyo na panghugas ninyo. If it is contaminated with the bacteria from your cesspool, then most probably we will get sick. Amibiasis, cholera, etc., etc. So, if you really don't have any choice, then you can opt for a cesspool. Now, here is just a table of comparison of the benefits, advantages, disadvantages of the three treatment systems presented. Okay? So, bahala na kamo mag-decide. Obviously, we do not have a centralized wastewater treatment, so hindi natin siya magamit. So, your only choice is the septic system and the cesspool. But, as students, I do not expect you pagtapos yun yung session, mapuli ka mo sa balay nyo, hambala nyo dahil na ninyo, parents, Nay, tay, hambal to kagina sa amun nga seminar. Mapaubrata ko no sa septic tank. Ako lang maubra, kita ko man to. Pwede na na. I do not expect you to do that. But you can do something else. You can produce less wastewater. And how do you produce less wastewater? You consume or utilize less wastewater. Di, ma'am, hindi ko mag-inom tubig, hindi ko maligo, hindi ko manut brush, hindi kami mang hugas, hindi kami mang laba. No. I don't mean like that. What I mean is that when you use water, be mindful of how you use it. Let's say, maligo ka adlaw-adlaw, tag 30 minutes. Nag-shower ka pa. Sige lang bukas mo sang shower. Pabayaan mo lang. Wala ka man may ginaubrada. Shampoo, shampoo. 30 minutes, good. So that 30 minutes, pwede ay han ikat na into 15 na lang. Para gamay lang ang tubig mo nga magamit. Or you can also suggest to your parents, can we fix all the leakages sa piping system na tondere? So that we will have less water disposed to the environment. Ma-maximize natin aton water use. So here are some, suggest su some suggestions. You can use a low-flow shower head or install a low-flow toilet. Uso na subong ang mga toilet that, are, uh, that uses less water. Before, ang toilet seats, ang toilet seats natin will use around 3 to 6 liters of water. Now, there are toilet seats that can use only around 1 to 1.6 liters of water. Ensure all leaky faucets are repaired. Use a front-load washer, meaning, hindi ka mag laba, nga overflow lang ang tubig. You have to estimate. Collect rainwater for use in the lawn or garden and fix all leaky hoses. Pwede man nga, kung magpaligo ka sa pets ni mo, paliguan mo siya sa lapit sa inyo garden. Dunga na lang, pamunyag. Kundi na cut in half pang imo nga chores. So you students, we do not expect any high-end uh, solutions coming from you. But again, we will go back to the source reduction. Reduce the source by being, by being mindful of how you use water every single day. Still drink eight liters, eight, eight glasses, eight liters, eight glasses of water every day, but watch how you use when you wash your hands, brush your teeth, take a bath, and you will greatly contribute to the reduction of contaminated water. Basi from 514 liters per person, we can reduce it to, let's say, just 200 liters per person and eventually become 150 liters per person. You will still use water. Hindi na siya ma-deny. But we can approach 
a smaller amount of usage every day. But if I still cannot convince you that you cannot do something about it, kung hindi tapagid ka mo convince, I will tell you this. In RA 9275 of the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004, Section 1028 states that unless otherwise provided herein, any person who commits any prohibited acts, prohibited acts meaning you contaminate water and return that contaminated water without treatment, provided in the immediately preceding section or violates any of the provision of this act or its implementing rules and regulations shall be fined by the secretary upon recommendation of the PAB in the amount of not less than 10,000 pesos or not more than 200,000 pesos every single day nga madakpan ikaw nga nagapulyut sang too big. So, kung five days ikaw na dakpan, 10,000 minimum, no? Multiplied by five, after five days, you will pay how much? 50,000. Tikong ang ginfine sa imo, 200,000. Multiplied by five, how much is that? That's half a million. Mapapriso ka na lang, no? Just spend the day in jail. Remember that water is essential to all dimensions of life. When we say all dimensions, physical, emotional, mental. Water is a finite resource. Let us contribute to the solution and not to the contamination. And finally, be a good steward over God's creation. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. It is our responsibility to keep our water resources clean and it is our responsibility to keep water resources clean for the future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Chris. For our next speaker, Sagun Sununta na lang, ay para dasig no. For our next speaker, may we call on Dr. Aris Roda Romaliosa, the coordinator of the Department of Agricultural Engineering for the topic on Ecological Waste Management Program of the University. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. While naga set up si ma'am, may I request everybody to please stand. Hindi kita yung ulan-ulan, kag magbagyo-bagyo ah. Tindog na ka mo, ladies and gentlemen. Stretch ka mo na yung pinaka grabe nyo nga unat sa bilog ng aga, subong ubrahan nyo. One, two, three, unat. <laughs> May sound pang unat, grabe unat ba? Uh, by the way, nagambal si Ma'am Nyo Hilungos nga the lectures will be part of your final exams? Ah, wala? Sino nagambal wala? Mami Hilungos, oh, wala ako kakuno nagambal nga part sa exams nila. Okay, try to... Uh, reach the sky. Sige na. Tihin. Para nga ang circulation sa blood. Magnami. Kaya hindi manami nga nagapungko lang. Are we done? Okay na? Alright. Take your seats. Thank you, Pastor Chair. <laughs> I call him Pastor. Pastor man na siya. Yeah, deny, deny niya lang na. So, good morning, everyone. May nga aga sa tanan. Yes, so this is a beautiful campus of CPU. 
Now, I took this picture years ago. So stitch na siya, but this is a good perspective of our beautiful campus, right? And beautiful siya. But sometimes we are all guilty of doing something bad for the environment, specifically to our own campus. No? Because what we do is, well, we do this, right? We throw away waste. And the question always is when we throw wastes, where do we put them after? Or when we generate wastes? It's really a vague question. Because when we throw wastes, it could be there. No? Araong baso na kasuno na. Nan, so dalon na after. Or it could also be, ato may plastiko ara, kita kuman. No, pede na siya later. So that's an example of throwing wastes away. And the question is, ang away naton could be here, but hindi ta gusto matabu na. Kay nga ah, dapat dalon ta basura ta karon. So that's the challenge, no? When we throw things away. So away could be dump site, no? It could be sa basurahan, nga dako. Or it could just be anywhere. No? Si ang ano na siya, mais, o susubong mais, di ba? So mag-sugba uh, sila din nila ginabutang, haboy. Bili na das gilid, no? So, kasubo, tanawon, nga muna ang sitwasyon. Or, oh, basi isa kang muda sa nag-haboy. Ginaimo nyo na. Ginaimo ta na, no? Hindi ta na pag deny ka, ginaimo ta na. So, well, we leave our waste almost everywhere. Ari, sa kwan ni siya. Well, sa tubang sang church, ayon. Or it could also be dumped somewhere. Somewhere could be, you know, a place hidden. Sa mata, sang turista, sa mata sang estudyante, no? Or it could be at the back of landfills or open dump sites, I mean, control disposal facilities. So that is the big question. When we throw wastes away. So my topic is about the ecological solid waste management program of our university. This is fitted kung anong kakatabo subong so that all of you would also be familiar that the university is also doing its best, no? To make sure that we are also compliant to the law. So our ecological solid waste management program is also based on Republic Act 9003. So nine, uh, RA 9003 is the ecological solid waste management act and it has its own implementing rules and regulations. So technically, this law is about being responsible of the waste that we generate down to disposal. So there is the technical side of waste management. And when we talk about waste management, of course, the main word there is solid waste or a plural solid wastes. And in the law, there are so many definitions of wastes. So it could be industrial waste, household waste, agricultural waste, no? Where my sector is. Contributor ginada. Street sweepings. Institutional wastes like CPU, schools, hospitals, non hazardous wastes. Harbor, industrial wastes, commercial wastes, ang mga SM, for example, or other commercial establishments. And even construction debris. Those are the part of the definition of solid waste, except for liquid wastes, because that is covered by a different law. Ato mga wastewater, yung discuss agina ni ma'am. No? So waste, therefore, if we define waste, it's still, it could be a source of something. So waste, now let's all read this together. Waste is a... Yes, true, right? It is a resource in the wrong place 
at the wrong time. So that plastic cup, for example, that is placed there. No? It's still a resource because if you bring that to the junk shop, it could still be sold. May value pa siya. So to a waste reclaimer, it's a source of money. But sometimes for a generator, it could be useless. So in short, waste is very subjective. Iba-iba aton opinion towards wastes. So when we talk about the solid waste management, Amo malang ni diri siya revolve, no? Just a little background para may background, uh, para may idea ka mo sa law. So, RA9003 adopts a systematic, comprehensive, and ecological program through the three R's. Yes, may four R na, di ba? But ang aton law, three R lang anay. Anong three R? Reduce, reuse, cycle. Impose penalties. Empower the informal sector. The need to create institutional mechanisms and incentives and improve management and operation of solid waste generated. So based on this framework, this is where our university could fit in. Because we also have something no, related to the three R and we also have something no well, we try to improve the system. So, diri ako ma-focus. Diri aton nga programa, nag-focus ang iya ka CPU. Now, okay, so namiyan ko niyo. Sino ka ba lumag basa Japanese? Well, it's something like, welcome and thank you for coming. Mala na meaning niya. But these are all plastic cups. Hindi ka bongga, no? Sang pag-create ni. It's an artwork. No? So, what are the goals of RA9003? In summary, it is to protect public health and the environment. It's to uh, uh, encourage resource conservation and recovery. Promote greater public participation, like this NSTP convocation. We want to uh, involve students, encourage private sector participation, like what CP is doing. We involve in government activities because we are part of the whole system. We support research and technologies and techniques in solid waste management. And also we promote environmental awareness such as this activity. So, in the hierarchy of the solid waste management, to kita nyo man inverted triangle, anong ara sa babaw? Yes, waste avoidance, reduce, kumbaga, kung sa isa ka R. And, kung hindi ko na avoid mo nagawa ang pag-generate waste, the next thing that you should do is supposed to reuse them or at least uh, you recycle. Recycling is more on the industrial level. After that, it would be processed. In short, na, kung tanawo natin, disposal is at the bottom of the hierarchy because it is supposed to be the smallest. Because we want to, as much as possible, recover siguro mga 70%. Why? Because out of the 100%, almost 50% there are biodegradable. Siguro 20% recyclable. So the 30% left are the so-called... Any idea? Residuals. Amo na gina, hindi mapusla na ito. Amo na dapat ang inadala dito sa kalahunan. The 70% should be recovered. So, kung tanawa na ito, public involvement is the most preferred option. No, we, in, we intensify public participation on this first two part of the hierarchy because these two are the most expensive. You have to invest on technologies. So, mahal, no? especially sa iban. And, where do we where do we fit in? Atun programa CPU. We focus here. No? The CPU ecological solid waste management program focuses on waste avoidance and reuse and recycling of some materials. It may not be at source all the time, but there are offices that are into recovery of their own waste. Example, among registrar nga ina, no? They try to and uh, no, separate all the waste paper, gina shred ina. Similarly, other offices are doing the same. Other organizations are also getting all their PET bottles. No, kita yun na sa gilid sang 
Kita ng globe. Ay, hindi man siya globe. Feed me. Kita yun si feed me? Sino kita kay feed me? Feed me nga, ano nga, halabuyan, sang plastic bottles. Gamay lang. Sino nakita again? Okay, so, that project, of course, is, yan na kasi PUR. Ari kagina si, si PUR president nyo. Okay, so, let's see. What are the, what's the program of the university towards these two? So, we do IEC campaigns. So, when you go, for example, to OA building, you would see some, uh, are, nakaara siya sa wall, clean as you go. Tiya mo gining challenge. Tani ba lang sa maghalin? Dalun ta man basura, tano? O, oh, atong ara da, ang stubang ged, no? So, we go, when we go, we make sure that the area is clean. Pwede tani mo on? Bo. Again, pwede na ito ni Moon Tanan. The kulang, how, kulang ang commitment. Can we do this so-called clean as we go? Yes. yes, thank you. Then, of course, at the dining hall, we would see here placements no, of uh, utensils and other plates. No? Ari diri, hindi lang siya kitanon. But this is the area where students are supposed to uh, place or dispose their biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste. So when you go to the campus, makita natin nga may mga amo kita sina. And of course, no, we also have this video. I don't know kung nakita niyo ni siya, but the next video is a project no, of our committee, the Sustainable Campus Committee, in uh, collaboration with the advertising students of the College of Business Administration. So, I hope when you see this video, no, medyo makonsensya, mantatani gamay. Sige, let's, uh, I will play the video. video wala sa library nagaplay na gakadto mga mo sani lose okay so um, of course so we need to intensify pa our campaign but that's our video it says when you feed the bean no may wrong spelling na tada when you feed the bean of course when we say feed the bean you feed the bean properly you are contributing something good for the environment because in waste there is money now, another thing is, when we throw with these beans, no, we want also to encourage everybody to dispose them properly. So there is a project before. No? Sa, this is also with the CPUR. No? Kita nyo na siya, galing iba ng kalapanas na. And we call it Art in a Bean Project. No? Instead of having your artwork in an illustration board, so, ginimo natin, diri na lang. Kaya nga, we want to eliminate the eyesoreness of, you know, ang mga blue beans. Inaabalang kung, di ba, kung may kubasura, doon nadlok man ta magpalapit, no? 
Lugar na maghaboy kita sa basurahan, dirita ng haboy sa tutupad ni basurahan. Kaya nahadlok na ta magpalapit siya. So when we paint our beans, at least we make them presentable. Especially lapit da sa may half moon. Okay? And with this project, we are, that's part of our so-called 3R initiative. So the reduce, reuse, recycle. What other initiatives do we have here as part of the ESWM program of the university? So, amo to ginahambal ko, the Feed Me project of the CPUR. Kita ina da. So, kung tanawon ta, damo giman plastic bottles, but may ara gidya nga ginamix kilahan nila, yas ang iban nga basura. No? So, this is an initiative of the CPUR. Ara siya, plastic bottles only. Then, we also have at the college, sa Amon sa Cares, we have this, we use PT bottles as planting pots, no? At the back of the Apotech Center, may arada area, no? Ang ginagamit sa estudyante. So, may mga used tires, no? PT bottles and other um, big containers. So, we use them for, for laboratory and also sa ilang mga baby theses. Then, for the elementary department, they launched uh, last year the Trash to Cash project. Together with, I think, CPUR also. So they have this small iHeart CPU notebook. That is where their recyclable waste are recorded every Monday. They would bring their plastic bottles and other materials. No, uh, They are weighed at the end of the semester or school year. The listed uh, amount of wastes are converted into cash. So si Pastor Chair, siya na nanagtagda, no? Sang Lipay lipay itong mga elementary students because they earned money from their recyclables. So sila, ari di sila, no? mga happy faces, no? Echo savers sila. We call them the echo savers. Then we also have, <clears throat> ari gali, amunin na generate nila, total uh, volume, no? Yeah, about 3,750 kilograms of recyclables were recovered for the whole year. And they were, uh, gin tagaan din sila ya eh, yung bayaran ina sila, based sa ila nga daw so-called Eco Saver Notebook. Do passbook bala, i-deposit mo da, kada bulan, lista on pilagin deposit. At the end of the school year, that would be computed and then you'd be paid based on the value of the material. So ara da, tag uh, 7, ang PT bottle, plastic container, 8, tin can, tag 4 pesos, aluminum can, 35 Heavy, heavy aluminum, that's uh, 35. Then, after generation, waste generation, butang to in store na no, sa basurahan, what happens is our waste are collected. So may araman kita nga track for that. The university has its own track to collect wastes. No? So on a study conducted by Capino, Amone last time, no? gina isa isa gina siya. So collection is done usually early in the morning. Kabi nyo wala may kakolekta sa masura, tami ara, no? That's before 8 a.m. So another uh, group, of, another personnel is in charge for that. And the recyclable waste, for example, coming from the elementary as part of the Trash to Cash project, goes to our so-called Materials Recovery Facility, or MRF. And then, these materials are, uh, ano, ginadala natin sa junk shop. So, last time we dala natin sa my Justine's, no? That's the biggest junk shop here in Iloilo City. So, dako ang aton nga na generate nga income. No? And of course, the university has its own uh, account, no? For the sales of all, uh, amo na, ang sa aton nga MRF. Then, before, in 2014, the university, through our student, Ermat student, no, si, Capi, si Fries Capino, he was able to analyze or characterize the waste generated by the university based on this population then, 14,000 plus, no? covering the kindergarten, elementary, most of the units of the university. And ano ang nakita niya? Anong results ng study niya? That the university could generate as much as 10,000 pesos weekly. Sa recyclables. Amuna ka, grabe ang basura. Especially if you try to recover waste that's, that's still value. Daku ang makuha mo da. No? So kung may mga organizations ka mo, 
pwede gidna. That could be a source of income for your own organization. So there's really money in waste recovery. 10,000, sa 10,000 nga ina, hindi pa to heightened ang recovery of wastes. How much more if we help kita tanan? So that's 10,000 weekly, ha? times 4, that's 40,000. More than enough to pay one staff to be responsible, especially sa characterization sa wastes. Okay, so kadako nga amount. And after the recovery of the recyclables, the biodegradables, what's left are our residuals, right? It goes to our so-called... Ay, sorry, hindi ka kita anon. We have our residuals containment area. Kung sino gagi sa gate 8? Kita yun na? Nan. So, yes. Thank you. So, amo na. This is, didi ka kadto si J.S. Lyson. Okay, didi nga nadala ni J.S. Lyson ang atong residuals. Sa? Kalahunan. Yes. So, nakakadto na kamus kalahunan. So, it's now a landfill. So, it's collected by the city, government, Going to Kalahunan Landfill. So this is where our residuals and other wastes are disposed. Nan. So this is the highest point sa Ililo City. Taasa na da, do bukid na ni. No? So dira siya. Ginatabunan siya sang soil. It's a landfill, meaning it's an engineered structure. Okay. So, right now, the city government, no, kay bago ng mayor to, di ba? So, may ara siya initiative. They just launched this one. And they call it the WHEELS program. So, therefore, the CPU Waste Initiatives, apart from being compliant to RA9003, is also in line with the city government's WHEELS program. So, WHEELS, diri kita o, environmental management. So this is where our ecological solid waste management initiatives or program no, fits in under the so-called WHEELS program. WHEELS of Inclusive Development and Good Governance. So this is the roadmap for Iloilo City. The aim is to make Iloilo one of the top three highly urbanized cities in the country, especially in terms of livability. And when we say livability, it means clean environment for living. Similarly, we also want CPU to be a livable or clean campus for everybody. So we need to keep the wheels turning if you want to see a cleaner and greener CPU. So when we talk about wastes, let's think about climate. Because when you think of climate, we also think of their future. So thank you very much. This is a friendly reminder from your Sustainable Campus Committee. So let's all become good stewards no, for our environment. So thank you and again, good morning sa tanan. Thank you, Ma'am, Ma'am Roda, for that infor very informative topic. And as we continue to Move forward for this uh, NSTP wow, program. Wow, wow, we would wow. like to call on our last but not the least Speaker of the House. May we call on Mr. Prim C. Vergara III, our Occupational Safety and Health Officer of Central Philippine University. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay. May ara ka mo da yellow pad dala? Wala. Why ka mo ginambalan nga matest subong? Tisiro ka mo eh. Ah. Abi nyo ano ning unod sang laptop ko? Test questions. Ah. Why ka mo ginambalan eh. Okay. Okay, question number one. 
Bala ka mo da iya. Basta, ginapate ko lang si Mami Lungos. Kaya kung hindi ko pagpatiyon si Mami Lungos, kigan ko ni Ma'am. Hmm. Okay. Ang muna yung isa ka question. How sick is our earth? Tutuod lang, pamati ka mo anay subong, because this is the last topic. This is our discussion with my nine-year-old daughter. Gapapuli kami, kapoy na ko, siya halin man sa school, pero naghutik siya sa akin. She is riding at the back of the car. She said, and she asked me, Papa, how sick is our earth? Ano kamasakiton ang aton earth? Siling ko, yes, our earth is indeed sick. Siling niya, ti nagahilanat siya. Siling ko, yes, nagahilanat siya. That is because of that real picture. I don't know kung ano ang lecture sang akon nga nine-year-old daughter. But you've been there. You've been a nine-year-old before. Hindi bala ka mo nang incurious during your nine-year-old if during your time, Earth was already sick. And the gakatabo subong is naga balatian pagid siya nga nagabalatian earth is getting sicker and sicker this is the cause travel why kamo kabalo ko magsakay kamo sa jeep you are contributing to earth sickness yes you are magsakay kamo auto Maglupad ka mo sa aeroplano. Ha? Huh? Look at that. Now you are reacting. That is the truth of the matter. We are contributors for the Earth's destruction. Simple lang ina siya. Now, Namangkot siya sa akin. Is our earth dying? What do you think is my answer? Simply, yes. Our earth is dying. She is dying. And that is why we are here right now to call for help. And it is only you and me can help our own Mother Earth. Amone ang sa pinsariya de yon paghambal ko when the Earth was dying. She said, "Tik kanugon sang Earth kung mapatay siya e ano sa bat ko? Hipos lang ko. Sila kaganugon sa aton e kaya mapatay man kita kung mapatay ang Earth." A simple logic from a nine-year-old. Conscious she is that the earth is dying, and if the earth is dying, then the lasha. Have you thought about that? Kung ano gakatabo sa aton palibot, kita ang apektado. Kag kung ano ang aton ginahimo, nagakaapektuhan ang Earth? Correct. Now, the lesson behind the talks. Our own awareness of the facts surrounding ang Earth. Halin ka ina, asta subong, those are facts presented to you. Kung wala ka mo nagapamati, halin ka ina, then you don't even care 
about earth. And if you don't even care for the earth, you don't even care for yourself. Bahala na ang buwas. Bahala na ang buwas. Sino sa inyo di ang may handom nga magkapamilya pa? Nga gusto nyo dapat ang akong bata sa ulihi, uh, mangin uh, senator, mangin congressman, mangin mayor sa Iloilo City. O, oh, nagtindogin ka ni, o. Oh. <coughs> Amo na iyang tao nga may handom. But, do we care? So, what do we need to do now? <coughs> Let's think about resilience. Ano ng resilience? Nakita niyo yung picture? Anong ginapunggan niya? Nga matumba. That is what we are doing now, actually. Because Earth is dying, ginapunggan ta siya nga hindi mapatay. Kaya kung mapatay, patay man, kita tanan. Okay? So, amo ini siya, ang ginatawag nga dapat naton itsindihon. May ari ako di hampanganan. Hindi ako magmadjik. May bula ako di nga dako. Actually, giant tennis ball ini. Nakakita na kamo giant tennis ball. Okay. Anyway, that's out of the point. This represents our resources. Ano ini siya? Anong resources? Give me one resources. Food, water, air, or oxygen. And we are using the resources, aren't we? Yes? We are using, right? This is our life. Kag nakita ninyo na ang ginawag, ang natawag na resilience, meaning to say, ang ining ba-ba sang basin, amuni ang dapat kutob lang nga gamitan naton sang resources. Hindi naton pagpatamaan, hindi naton pag-abusaran. Kay nga ah, once we used our resources, it is just like this happening here. It goes around this basin. All right? Now, kun abusaran ta ini ang resources kag hindi na mangin resilient Hindi na magpugong, ano matabo? Mamat-amat siya? Ha? Awas. Di ba? Kag mag awas na siya, that will be a big problem. Basi waay nakita sang mabakal nga isda. Basi waay nakita sang maharvest nga utan. Basi wala nakita sang prutas. Basi wala na sang bugas. Basi wala na kita sang mainom nga tubig. Kag wala na kita sang maginhawa nga air. Now, kay nakabalo na kamo sina. Ano himo unta? Ano himo unta? That is your commitment right now to care for your surroundings. This is now our job. Kami hindi na mo ni masarangan nga kami lang. Ginapabalo na mo sa inyo kung ano ang amon ginaubra para nga mag-participate ka mo. Okay? We would like Earth to stay longer. Because for me, I have my plans, I have my dreams for my children. How about you? 
if you have dreams for your children, then think about it within yourself. God gave us the gift of life. It is up to us to give ourselves the gift of the living well. Tandaan nyo na. God gave us the gift of life. It is up to us to give ourselves the gift of the living well. I would like to remind to you your commitment sa inyo adapt a building and grounds project. We are observing nga wala na kamo nagapakialam. But I would like to tell you that is your contribution to save earth. And also to save your grades. You are graded for that every day. So, by so doing, NSTP, ang pagtungko ninyo dira kagpagpamate, may kapuslanan ini. Kaysa pagwa ninyo, you will be earth savers. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Excited din sila. For the giving of certificates and token, may I call on Ma'am Ann and Engineer Kesam Joy and the citation reads Central Philippine University National Service Training Program Haro Iloilo City presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Excuse me, dears, mga plangga, pungkuanay. Ang attendance after pasang program. Thank you. Certificate of Appreciation to Chris Sam Joy Haspe in grateful acknowledgement and appreciation for the time she gave as a resource person during the NSTP plenary session with the topic environmental awareness and protection and water conservation given this seventh day of September 2019 at Rose Memorial Auditorium, Central Philippine University, Iloilo City, Philippines. Signed, Ms. Annalie D. Hilongas, NSTP coordinator and signed, Teodoro C. Robles, President. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, ma'am. Same certificate is given to Ms. Ma'am Aris Roda D. Romaliosa. Dr. Aris, thank you. And same certificate is given to Mr. Prim C. Vergara III. Thank you, sir. Every argument, every word we can't take back. Because with all that has happened, I think now we both know the way that the story ends. Then only for a minute.